We have two additions. First one is a two legal borrow of a part time MS PMS member at $15 an hour with no benefits. And the second addition, if they do last, will be number 14, will be discussed joint meeting, sub board, and village trustees at VFW October 25th. We're having like difficulties, so um, I may have to unplug and plug back in. Is anything that you say being recorded though? Yes. Okay. Come on. Come on. I've unplugged everything. It's going to be at least a minute before it's up and running again. Can you can go ahead. There we go. For this position, uh, Angel Bayra. She, we are. Um, she would be a part-time EMS, and she would be filling one slot of what was previously known as volunteers, which is now part-time. They are currently budgeted for 15. Um, we only have eight serving, so it's well within the budget. Did I say that correct, Weepo? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
Do we vote on it? Oh, we didn't vote on it. So um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> motion is passed. Can you guys uh, give me one second, please? Sure. Sorry to interrupt. I need to catch who made the motion to approve adding Angel. Okay. I did. Chris? Yep. And I seconded. Laura? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now you may continue. Thank you. Number two, cancel the November 20th, 2023 select board meeting. So this meeting falls on the week of Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, so there's discussion on whether or not we'd have enough for a quorum and the fact that we are going like five weeks straight of budget meetings during that time frame. So we wanted to give you the option to cancel that meeting. I would think that makes sense. I agree. Holiday week. You I wanna make that, a motion? I will. Um, I would make the motion to cancel the select board meeting scheduled for November 20th, 2023. I will second. A motion is second, any discussion? Yes. I, I, Come to the microphone, please. Uh, my name is Tom Cody at uh, Marfield. And the reason I would uh, advise against this is because looking at your list of the meetings that you have for the budget uh, coming up after that, I don't know when you're able to, uh, to uh, put this back on the agenda. And I've been to the meetings uh, where they had discussions on these zonings, and there was very little. Uh, there was some discussion, but it seemed everybody was happy with the with the uh, adjustments to the zoning. And uh, the quicker we get this taken care of, we can start working on the state mandated new zoning laws, which is really going to be difficult. So that's why I don't know if uh, you could this meeting. I don't believe would last very long, but it would get that off the agenda, and we could uh, seriously work on the uh, the budget, which you know is going to be. Uh, taking up that's money of time. Well, we're going to have <coughs> five meetings prior to November 20th dealing with budget. <laughs> yeah. But you're talking specifically about the zoning. But I'm just talking about care. the zoning yeah. change on October 26th, uh, 16th to get that done and get it off your agenda because it, and let those folks get to working on the uh, the proposed state changes. Well, not the proposed, the, right. the state changes. That, that's coming up in October 16th. Right, but it's coming up as an agenda item here in a couple couple minutes. We're on the item before that. Um, okay. We're on well, the then I'm going to say the same thing for the next one. Okay. okay. Well, duly noted. Okay. 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 All those in favor of canceling the November 20th, 2023 meeting? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion is passed. Number three, discuss moving the proposed zoning change hearing from October 16th, 2023 to a different date. So, um, I, I was the one. I was the one that that um, just added that to the agenda item. I'm not going to be here on the 16th. I need to be in Boston um, that day. It's a 1:30 appointment. I'm going to get back in time. Um, so I was just wondering if you and I, and and Judy Alberry um, was going to look in to see if it was legal for us to move it at this point. I was just going to say if we could do it on the 17th instead of the 16th. Um, I'd like to be a part of that conversation, but if it's not feasible, then that's fine. I just wanted a, a topic of conversation. Okay. Yeah. And I think, Judy, you had some information about that. Yes. So the 16th, we're not voting on anything. It'd just be discussion. Yeah. Um, we can't move it to the 17th, from my understanding. Because of warning. Correct. Okay. All right. And we're going to talk about a little bit tonight anyway. So, Correct. All right. Todd's going to. Yep, that's fine. So, this is kind of a moot point. Then. Moot point. Moot point. All right. All right. Moving right along. Number four select board introduction to the proposed zoning changes, public hearing October 16th, 2023. Is that you, Ghost Taj? If you'd like me to. Come on yeah. up to the microphone. And thank you for not being scheduled the hearing. The hearing is just, the hearing is not for you to talk or discuss. The hearing is for the public to weigh in and for you all to listen. You can't vote during the public hearing. You have to vote your next regular scheduled meeting. So you can't vote on these till November, was that 6th? I can't remember the calendar. But yeah, I believe November 6th. So okay. hopefully you get everything worked out with the trustees before November 20th and show the meeting now. You only have one meeting in November. So you'll have the one meeting in November to vote on these after the public hearing. Uh, the, I think everyone has the hearing packet, the hearing notice in their packet. Yeah. 
Uh, any questions on it? I'm happy to go through the list. I can, I'm going to do that at the hearing anyway. But if any concerns or normally give the select board a chance to kind of get the preamble and any, so you're going to the hearing with uh, knowledge of any of the big issues you might have. Some of the bigger issues on here, really it's not a big zoning update. Some of the bigger issues are the new changes to section 206, just a new jurisdiction for those design requirements. And it's also gonna apply to duplexes for the first time. That's really one of the big changes on here. Um, there's some waivers for <coughs> section uh, 510, which will be pretty minor and pretty random, not random, pretty unique circumstances when they're be used, but really the section 206 is the big one. Uh, and this zoning bylaw change does not include the S100 changes the legislature uh, mandated this last spring. Those will be done this winter. The only change in here for S100 is parking. Parking is now, you can only do one per unit. We've had more than that in some zones in town. So the state has limited our ability to uh, limit parking. So we can only do one per unit. We can't require two spaces per unit or three spaces per unit. Even if it's an eight bedroom apartment, it's one space is all we can require from the state. One one space per bedroom. No, per unit. That's the oh. change it was per bedroom before and now it's per, yes. per unit. So the state is just, the state is looking to eliminate parking as a barrier to housing. So that's one of the changes in here. But that's pretty straightforward. All our all our residential parking is now one per unit. We used to only have one per unit downtown. We used to allow two parking spaces as a minimum per unit in areas outside the downtown. Now it's a one everywhere. Okay, thank you for that. But the section two oh six is really the uh, the entree for the meeting. Uh, in terms of all the different zoning changes. Uh, there are some uh, minor flood rule corrections I'm doing. Uh, they're most, they're, um, you may hear about the, pro pro the pro proposed prohibition on dumpsters in residential zones. That's for the uh, it's townwide all residential zones. That's a quality of life issue. So we don't have dumpsters banging at four o'clock in the morning across the village. And um, raccoons and bears and oh yep. my. Yep. Well, there's, but there's dumpsters at commercial. Correct, commercial still allowed, just okay. residential. And does this pertain only to the village? Uh, no, it does not. It's a village in town. Village in town. It's all residential zones. Dumpsters aren't, aren't already allowed for single family homes, so you shouldn't really have a dumpster unless it's pre existing for a single family home anyway. I'm not sure why you need a giant well, dumpster. Well, you, you do have a, uh, an accept, exception here. People are doing construction. Correct, yeah, construction is allowed. Right. Yes. People have a, the construction uh, haul off dumpster, and that's okay. Do you have to get a permit for that, or is that just, that's just allowed? There's only one of me. I can't track everything. Okay. Yeah, the roll-off yeah. dumpsters. For yeah, exactly. Construction. Those are okay. If you're doing construction, you can have a dumpster. What is ORB? Uh, where do you see that? What number? Uh, what section? 204 waiver. The ORB may reduce up to 25%. I looked in definitions. I didn't see anything. 204.4.5. Point four. Add specific waiver calculation language and clarify parking waiver. No, what does oh you're in the actual what thing does itself. What does ORB stand for? Sorry, one second. Okay. 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 Right. Yeah. Oh, I see the ORB show. Yeah. F section F. The ORB show be be in receipt of supporting that, that should be DRB. Okay. So that the, should be a D. Right. That's something we will Catch. change as part of this. Thank yeah. you. The DRB shall so be in. Yeah, the, is, orb, the orb is not an alien spaceship. It's actually it's a development in, board. And it is It is somewhat throughout. So yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll change that. Yeah. Yeah, thank some, you. Yeah, there are some other spelling things we noticed. Yeah. Yep, thank you. Yeah. Now's the time to get them fixed. They would, well, I didn't, I didn't look at all the typos and spelling, but there's a lot. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anything like that, let me know. That's the time to discuss it. Any other discussions before we get to the public hearing? Um, yeah. Richard. I've got a question about the dumpster thing. I yes. know there's people that have run their own, run a business out of their own home. That would um, be okay. For, it's a business use. They've got a permit for the business. Okay. That's, that's okay. All right. So it's just strictly the yeah, residential, residential uses. That's a not business a, use of the home. You know, someone has a painting business. That's okay. And that's okay. And anyone with the um, zoning is always forward looking anyway. Anyone that structures, if you have like an enclosure for dumpsters, I'm going to allow the dumpster to be there. If you have a dumpster without an enclosure just placed up and could be put down in a different area, then I would apply the new rule to you. Okay. But if you've got an enclosure or a fence or a screen, you're going to be grandfathered. Okay. Thank you. Some sort of structure to hide the dumpster. Okay. But the, um, just Jean, Jean. for clarification, what, since Richard asked this question, um, the business has to be a home business permit. It has permit. to be a permit, yes. Yeah. Or it can be a farm or, or something or yeah. something like that, yes. Yeah, so it has to, so it can't just be. 
I have a business. So the intention is for the, the dumpsters get picked up between four and six in the morning and they're yeah. dropped and they're allowed. Right. Um, the intention is to replace them with roll with uh, uh, the totes, the rolling totes. Yeah. The totes get picked up at noontime midday. Right. They do the dumpsters early because they're generally in commercial settings. So they can get in and out before cars are parked, especially in Montpelier. They do us first, then they go to Montpelier. So Casella is very happy to move it to totes. So it's a different truck, different route, midday versus the morning. Really, the they look at any dumpster as a commercial use, as we're trying to do here, not a residential. So they don't really realize a rooting place in the computer that they're in a residential neighborhood dropping dumpsters at 5 a.m. because it's a commercial use for them. So they don't really realize the difference. I'm sure the driver does, but. He just picked it right, right, yeah. So you're saying totes don't get picked up till the afternoon, and Correct. is that strictly business? Uh, their tow truck is the afternoon, the dumpster truck's the morning. If you have totes, you're getting an afternoon pickup. If you're getting dumpsters, it's a morning pickup. Different trucks. They come by my house at 6 o'clock Monday morning. Well, for which one? This, this is Casella I'm talking about. This is, third, this is the Thursday pickup. Yeah, they come by Monday morning at 6 On Thursday, the dumpster is at 6 a.m., the totes is in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah, because they did Monday, Thursday, but okay. So the one thing that for me that I have problems yep. with is like, um, section, section. I need a visual. I, I don't understand the, um, it's 206 design criteria, E, it's E, hyphen <coughs> J garages. Um, I, I start reading this and my eyes start crossing, so I, okay. I don't totally get it. Maybe somebody else on the board totally gets it and understands. I do. I was involved in it, so I'm happy to explain to you, but I understand what you're saying. And we have a planning council oh. member here and a planning council chair online, too. I think having a, some visual might be helpful so that people can see what does it mean now and what does it mean with the changes. Sure. Uh, specific, specifically, this was related to a development app application um, on Maple Street, whereas they're proposing duplexes and the bottom floor is nothing but garages. There's no entrance on the ground floor. So the neighbor is going to look at two bays of garages for each duplex. That was the only ground floor use. And they wanted basically to limit the ground floor frontage to more than, no more than half the garage. So the garage wouldn't dominate the streetscape. It would be at least half house and then garage. They want the house is really the primary look and the garage to be uh, sub subordinate in terms of size and set back from the house. This requires, I believe, a uh, five foot setback from the plane of the house. Okay. So they're looking forward to go look more neighborly, like the people come first and not the cars in the garage come first when you're looking at the street. That was, okay. the, that was the point. So That's I can try to draw something up too if you like. That, no, that explanation gave me a visual yep. I can yeah. understand. Yeah, the intent probably helps. Yes. Yeah. Um, anybody else have any questions? I know I had a couple on here. No, I think that um, you know, I, have, I have some specific thoughts about the bylaws themselves, but. We'll, we'll get to that after the public hearing. What about the minimum parking ratio requirements? Um, there's some red uh, red language here, and it looks like it's crossed out. So is this, are we supposed to be looking at that, or is that not? Yeah, this is the earlier use the planning council had. Um, the, what this is, this is doing what I spoke about earlier with S100. This gets rid of all our parking requirements that are more than one per unit and takes us down to all one per unit. Okay, so the, that red language is, all is, being is going to be gone. Yeah, that's all got striped. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's just showing so, the change. All right. So it reads yeah. dwelling unit one per. Okay. One per. All residents one per. I didn't know if the, re the red language was changing and the strikeout was taking it out. I couldn't understand. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure either. Um, and then, um, oh, what was it the last page? No, it's not. Um, yes. Under 409, exterior lighting. That's the village only. 490. Looking at the parking lot, including parking lot lighting. All exterior lighting out in security. We sat on a five minute arrest motion. So we're talking about municipal parking lot? That was that. Uh, we're talking at this is town and village. This is everywhere. Okay. I believe it does exempt uh, the parking lot at one point in here. Let me look through. Uh, it says exempted lighting per something 490. So parking, so parking lot 25. Exclude. Yeah, lighting okay. section 490.5 excludes lighting installations on municipally owned property. Okay. And this really, this changes to our existing zoning bylaw doesn't allow string lights to be up year round. They're only allowed, if you want string lights, I have string lights on my back deck, so I'm in violation of the town zoning. I apologize. Um, in order for them to be turned on during the summer, this change has to go through. We only allow string lights or holiday lights during the months, the holiday period of October or Halloween through January. So come February, string lights are not allowed in this town. And this is 
compromise language that allows string lights all year round. They're off by 10 o'clock if they're on a structure and not in a setback. So this is trying to uh, uh, make peace between some dueling parties on string lights. And most people have string lights, probably half the people in town have string lights on their house somewhere, and they're on outside the holiday period. We're trying to really make a common practice uh, legal, but have some controls on it. So you can't put string lights 50 feet in the air, and you can't shine in your neighbor's windows, those kind of things. Yeah. Pretty, pretty small stuff, but important to some people. Yes, it is. Yes, if you are. <laughs> um, so then there was um, 505A, landscaping, about parking areas. And I, I thought, I was wondering about the municipal parking lot. Um, the municipal parking lot uh, should have gone through the DRB process, but it did not. So, so it has not gotten a review. So in theory, yes, the missile parking lot, the landscaping is required, but the select board did not let it go through the DRB process. I mean, but right now, I don't think there's any place to put landscaping as as written here for that missile parking lot. Well, the, the parking lot would obviously, it's developed right now, would fall into the old zoning, not the new zoning. Okay. Um, this zoning, the 505, largely talks about making it more clear when a landscape buffer is required to hide parking from a road. It's that five foot buffer uh, when there's 10 or more spaces. So. Uh, the missile parking lot predates this. Okay. It'll be grandfather. Correct, yes. All right, good. Well, um, okay. Pretty it's a specific change, <laughs> this new proposed change. Uh, but, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to bring I'm gonna bring this up because I was on the DRB when this came through. Uh, this was not the plan that the DRB originally saw. And somehow or other, the parking changed. Um, to where it is now, but it's not even up to what our zoning is for parking because the RV requires trees being planted. And we, for some reason, the municipal lot doesn't have trees. So I'm not sure. Can you speak to that, Todd? Um, we're uh, the waters under the bridge at this point or past the bridge. However, uh, when that lot was previously done, when the post office went in and got a DRB permit, it should have gotten a DRB permit for the design, but the DRB wasn't allowed to review it by administration. That wasn't Jason, obviously. That wasn't, no, wasn't DRB, Jason. That was Dan, yeah. So, yeah, this was, and I will say there was, I'm not sure how this happened. I can say that I'm not particularly happy about it, that we have a beautiful municipal lot in the middle of town that is not following our zoning bylaws that we require from everybody else. Um, so I know that it's technically approved, but I do think that we should look going forward and adjusting that because to not have any trees over there, uh, to me is <coughs> just horrible. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to blame anybody, but I would no, like I, I to- I can't control that, obviously. That's, I realize that's that administration, and, not me. And yeah, so- goes back to why we have different groups who do different things. So this was an unusual situation. I'm just saying going forward, I, I would like to see us somehow put trees in that parking lot because we require it of all of our other uh, permits. And I think it's kind of um, just wrong of us to be the town be an exception. And, and I know the mistakes were happened, but I would like to get it on at some point plan to fix that. So Todd, a question. Yes. At the time that that municipal lot was laid out, what were the zoning requirements at that time? Uh, there's supposed to be a street tree every, there's supposed to be parking lot islands and street tree, I believe every 30 to 60 linear feet. Okay. There isn't obviously, but it wasn't allowed to go through DRB review. Why? It was administration. I don't, I don't know if there, there was- wasn't any rationale to that? No, I, not that I'm aware of, not, didn't, I'm not high up enough. I'm not high enough enough on that food chain. Okay, that was, a, that was an administration that. decision. I don't know if select board was involved, but I assume it was the administration. I didn't know if historically you were. Uh, if you, I mean, they can let you speak if you want. Yeah, I'm happy. So, to, I'm happy to sit down. I'm happy to sit down. Yeah. Yeah. So I, again, I don't. We don't want to go backwards, but I would like to see us anticipate at some point fixing it because it's it just it's ugly. Sorry, it's ugly. I do agree that if we are requiring yeah. developers to go through the same hoops, we should yeah. 
require us to go to the same home. So rules should apply equally yeah. to everyone. And, and goes back to why we have separations of powers. Why DRBs do permit, why zoning does theirs. And, I, and I'm not sure how this happened, but I think it's all on our radar to not let it happen again. Okay. Parking lot does look pretty good overall, though. Back. Overall, it looks great. Yeah. We're going to do our discussion. We'll get we'll sure. over yeah. uh, 506, site protection and restoration. Uh, oh, darn it. Okay. It's uh, under 6L. Um, I just wrote them awkward. Okay. It's in um, the trust or other to owner fails to maintain. Let me see what it is. Said easement over such land shall. I'm not quite sure what the word is. Two, ensure its perpetual maintenance and provide that in the event the trust or other owner fails to maintain. There's something awkward about that. I'll have to go back and review okay. it. Okay, I'll look, I'll look at it too. The intent here is the, if you're doing a conservation subdivision, let's say someone has 100 acres, instead of doing 52 acre lots, they get to do 51 acre lots and 50 acres dedicated open space for public use and enjoyment of everybody. So the developer saves money by engineering half the site, developing half the length of roads, half the length of water, sewer, or whatever else is there. So, and the, they, the town exchange, even if it gets smaller lots, gets the open space and gets preserve uh, the carriage of the neighborhood. And maybe that's a part of the plot facing the road and you can't see the houses in the back. So there's a ways, there's, it's a win-win scenario. What this basically says is the, it's an updated uh, language that <coughs> if the developer or HOA uh, owns the homeowner, owns the open space area and they're not maintaining a pretty agreement, the town can go in and fix it. Let's say they cut down some trees they're not supposed to or something like that because half the open space is supposed to remain natural in its natural state. The town can go and fix it and the town can basically put a lien against the property. Okay. All right. So I'll go back and look, and look through the writing on that and make sure it's clear. It's hard when you're looking at the track changes. And just, and it was an awkward sentence at the end. Yeah. Let's see. What else you got for me, Judy? Fire away. 820.5. I'm already on the page. When the select board names the street, it shall act upon the zoning administrator's recommendation. Um, this is what you asked. This is the change you all asked for. Yeah. I'm when you name streets, you're supposed to say, because you come, you get private or not. Private yeah. or public, because you're early in the process. Here's a proposed road. Is this private or public? If it's private, it's going to be 16 feet wide. And uh, in terms of travel lane width, and the developer is going to engineer it that way. And that goes to the roads, that goes to the stormwater, that goes to the sizing of all the development. But if you're saying, hey, this road says a public purpose, we're probably going to want to take this one and we want this road to be 20 feet wide because it connects mm -hmm. Route 15 with Center Road, like the road we're going to get up there. You're not going to want a 16 foot private road that the developer can do. You're going to want a 20 foot ride paved roadway. And you're going to say, this is going to be a town road. There's your indication now to show that in the DRB plans, 20 feet and paved, and uh, size your stormwater for that amount of impervious and all the fun stuff that goes with that. It's a really big change for the developer in terms of uh, road width, if you're doing private versus public. So uh, the last couple of times I've come to you and said, hey, we're doing a road name, and I said, by the way, private or public, and you're like, huh? This is a reminder, this puts it in, yeah. in writing that this is the process. You're supposed to have an indication at the time to the developer, if the road's gonna be a private road because it, it's a cul-de-sac and doesn't provide much public function, or if this is gonna be a main commuter road and the public's gonna use it so you want a more substantial form of road because you're gonna maintain it in the future. My concern was just the word shell. Okay. And it means that the select board has to take your recommendation. Shell was in there, I can take that up. We, you can take just that out when you do it, just yes. Just do a May. Okay. That's all. You can switch that, that's a minor change. You can switch that to May when you do the uh, approval. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering also about the definition of building that a fuel storage tank would be considered a building? We have to do that for FEMA. Oh, okay. You don't want propane tanks floating down the river and hitting no. the dam. Those are bad. So you've got to regulate those. That's why that's being done. All right. Okay. Um, and you have on under short-term housing, you have less or fewer. So I guess you're just playing with whatever word you want to use there. Yeah, the planning council, while we're making one other change, the, uh, the council chair has asked me to change the wording to, I think fewer instead of less or vice versa. One of okay, so it doesn't, it's No, it's non-material. The, the one change there for short-term housing is clarifying. Right now, if you're, you need a permit for a short-term rental, short-term rentals have to be owner-occupied 
in the village for many, many years, but newly in the town last year. Mm -hmm. If you sleeping, if you have more than five bedrooms, sleeping more than four bedrooms, sleeping more than eight people, you need a permit. Uh, what the language in there says is it's exempt from permitting if it's four bedrooms or less. The thought process is if I have my house like right next to you, it's probably a three or four bedroom single family home, and I use it accordingly. The short term rental is just three bedrooms, it's probably just six people, and it's really the same intensity of use of the existing uh, single family home, how it's being used historically. However, it's different. If you're going to say take that four bedroom house and pack 15 people into it, and it's a different <coughs> kettle of fish for the neighbors, for parking, for impacts, for noise. So, so that's where yeah, where the, that's where the exemption comes in. If you're doing four bedrooms, eight or four bedrooms or less, eight people or less, it's exempt. But we're clarifying in the definition, it does not exempt you from the owner occupancy requirement. That's always been assumed, but that was a question. So that's the intent is to clarify that. Even though it's exempt from permitting four bedrooms, eight people or less, it's not exempt from the owner occupancy requirement. The, um, at the planning council hearing, I, th I thought that they agreed to change, take housing out and put in short term rental. Uh, which copy do you have? I believe I've done that in the final copy. It was, you guys seem to have been having a here tonight. I marked up the one I brought to the hearing. Gotcha. Let me see. I'm sure did that. Would that be on the <clears throat> short term housing? Yes. So, yeah, they, they talked about, I thought I agreed upon instead of short term housing. I agree with you, Chris. It was short term rentals. It's short term rentals in the copy, the final copy you have. Yeah. The copy that you're probably reading off of is the one that went to planning. Right. And this is the, show, the one you have shows the changes, that, the few changes planning yeah. made. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm almost done. I think uh, special industry. I'm wondering how um, how this jives with what's happened with MSI on 100. It doesn't jive at all because zoning is always forward looking. Zoning doesn't look back. Anything that already happened is grandfathered. So at the hearing for the DRV project for uh, Route 100 for the airport industrial park, there was a language clarification issue regarding. Uh, rock crushing and our regulations uh, currently the require or well, specify rock crushing and what happens, but it wasn't in the actual definition part. So it just is a clarification per the direction of the DRB, the planning council did to uh, to simplify the title and to make sure the title included rock crushing since the regulations talk about blasting. We're obviously blasting something. We're blasting rock. So uh, the people at the hearing said, well, we don't allow rock crushing. It doesn't say it in the title. Well, it does, we do allow rock crushing because we regulate how it's done. It just didn't say in the title. So we're adding it back to the title to make it more clear. The planning council is planning to look at this section 45 language at some point in the future after S100. So not, not the 24 update, maybe the 2025 update. They do plan to look at this language. But for right now, they're just doing the definition update that DRB asked them to do. How about under structure with billboards? Do we need that or? The word billboard since they're illegal in Vermont. You can add it if you want. No, it's it's, it's already there. there. Oh, it's, it's striked out. No. So it's yeah, it's, it's already showing the change. The change is the structure is uh, uh, signs, walls, fence, except a wall or fence and operating farm. Okay. A walled and roof building, including a manufactured home, a gas or liquid storage tank. Uh, uh, signs, walls, or fence, except you're, you're reading the strike there. You're reading proposing what's going, what's okay. being deleted. Just, it's, it's red and it's underlined. So, yeah. This? So that's, you've got, uh, yeah, see, they've stricken that all out oh, okay. here. And they, oh. It just didn't get carried forward there. So oh. it's a typo. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're, ours are underlined, not yep. struck. Yeah. yeah. Mine has, mine has a strikeout, but it's still included in that copy there. Gotcha. The yeah, Judy is looking at the earlier pre-planning council copy. The one you're looking at should just have no strike through, which is all the, right. the final language. Okay. Yeah, so no, we've got all the strikeouts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've got all the... That's okay. Um, yeah, it's okay. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't hurt you guys to see it. At the hearing, where everyone will have just the final language. Yeah, that's it. it. Yes, For that's me. it. Okay, anyone else? This is your chance. You got me on the hot seat. Richard? Mark? Chris? No, talk about it. So the next yeah. hearing, the way this works, you cannot vote at the next meeting. The next meeting is the public's meeting. It's not your meeting. You can say thank you for comment, thank you for comment. You're, you can engage the public if you want. You don't have to. Just move along. Generally, you give everyone two to three minutes to talk, depending on the length of the hearing, which this shouldn't be that bad. It's not a very significant zoning update. You can let people have second, third, fourth uh, chance to talk if you like. That's up to you all how you want to run the meeting. Just everyone has a chance to talk initially. Once everyone talks, you can close the hearing, you can keep the hearing open, uh, but you can't vote on this till the hearing is closed and you vote your next regular meeting. The important thing is here, 
uh, as we'll learn later in this agenda, you've got to make sure you talk to the trustees because we're, we're not a merged town. We're Morrisville mm -hmm. and Morristown. We're separate municipalities. You have to vote on the exact same language. And if you don't attend each other's hearings, like no one attended the trustee meeting on the 20th, the trustees struck down the joint, rule, joint rules language you guys approved. Then we're back to square one. We're back to 2022 again. So you got to work with them on this. Otherwise, we'll end up with what are they, 43 or 34 versions of the town plan. That's how you end up doing that. So it's just something to keep in mind. So you have the hearing on the 16th. Your next meeting is the 6th. That's your only meeting in November now. So in theory, you vote to approve the 6th, but you should be voting on the same language as the trustees at that point. Well, we're, meet, we're proposing to meet with them on October 25th. Awesome. That's perfect. So you're both going to have the hearings. Yeah, that was you can discuss any changes, come together on the changes, and then be good for your votes in theory if you all line up correctly. Yeah, that was That's super good. helpful. So Jonathan, you wanted to say something? Why don't you stand up and introduce yourself? <laughs> Jonathan Mogor, Soulmate Brewing Company. Um, you mentioned the parking lot. Things changed from when Dan retired, and then um, you know Eric took over the plan. So Todd and I discussed this with Dan before he retired because the parking lot was supposed to be done a while ago. Um, knowing that we were going to have a loading bay and they were going to open up an area off of what is that Pleasant Street? So right where Pleasant Street Auto was for a truck to back right up to us. Um, I know I sent everyone an email like that didn't happen. I saw the I saw the curbs coming out. I was like, all right, cool. This is finally happening because I had to pay my portion for the paving. And then I saw him put the curbs back in and I was like, well, what's going on here? Um, so that's when Eric Dodge brought a new schematic over to me, which showed like a pie shaped parking allocation which should give enough room for say, an 18 mil to get in there to get us what we need. And then when I saw the guys putting out the marks after Eric's gone, got a hold of Jason and then we all met and um, there's no room for any trucks. I actually had FedEx and UPS couldn't get to me because there were cars parked in the middle row. Uh, and that was even with then taking the two spaces that are in front. I mean, Eric put two parking spaces right in front of my space. I'm like, you know, so anyway, Jason went over there. He's like, all right, we'll change that. But still, if you look at even the size of a box truck, a smaller box truck, UPS and FedEx can't even get to us now, you know? And so, you know, I mean, then these, these big yellow freaking pots in there. I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, talk about like an obstacle. So when you're mentioning like trees, yeah, I mean, it's just they, they made so many obstacles and, you know, and the crazy thing is, you know, again, for Dan to retire, and then Eric to make a, a decision without discussing it with me or Todd or anybody, you know, I mean, as I was mentioning with Jason, I mean, I have more money tied up in that building than probably all four buildings on that on, on our row there together between the building, the build out for the brewery. So I just want to, I don't know if we want to have, what's that? I just want to interject real quick. We got a pretty long meeting. Yeah. Um, this may be better suited in our community comments. Yeah. I thought we were going to talk about, you know, trees. well, I just yeah. figured if you're going to make changes, maybe that well, kind of ties in, you know, I'm just, I mean, this is know. more about some changes to the zoning. Yeah. I, we, yeah. Your issues, I think is separate from this. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's I folks would, in the audience waiting to speak you, and share later during yeah um, actually just thank you. Thank seems you. like maybe we need it needs its own agenda item <laughs> we could do that for yeah. the next meeting too yeah i think we need it needs a whole conversation well, the one thing i would then ask us you're talking you know quickly yeah. talking about the temperature of the painting lines we can do that i'm just wondering yeah. like what can we do in the meantime <laughs> well, I, can't do well, that I think it's fair to say that we're communicating back and forth and that's still ongoing so oh, yeah, yeah. i don't feel that we're at the point where we need to we have discussion in this arena at this point but yeah. no, that's fine. I mean, thank you thank you john yeah. okay. okay yeah all right Thanks. so um we're done with the report i think <laughs> want to introduce yourself sure. Joshua Goldstein, Planning Council member. I just implore, I'm glad you're meeting with the trustees. Like, these are pretty mundane changes. We're really hoping as a group that we can get through this because we have a lot of work ahead of us, a lot. And we just went through the town plan and we're trashing everything we've done for six years. So this is small stuff. Judas yeah, 100. Like, we're rewriting everything. Maps, zoning, regions, lines. So I just hope that these small changes can pass. 
quibbles aside with trustees, like I really hope we can all come together and move forward because we have a lot of work. We pushed this ahead in our agenda because we waited as a group and said, this really isn't much here. The public isn't out crying. So like, I hope we can just move forward. And I'll tell everybody up on Elmore Street the same thing. We have a lot of work ahead of us and we can't much get to it if this is going back and forth. And we also have no power to say anything. So we just sit in limbo, not doing our work when it's going back and forth like a ping pong ball. So I just hope that we can leave small language aside and move forward to way more important things. Thank you. Like we'll be non-compliant soon if we don't take I care of it. I appreciate your, your you comments there. Please? Yeah, I just was curious. I mean, um, and I don't want to get into a discussion on, on specifics. Um, what really caught my attention was 206, but um, should the select board and the trustees not come to terms on this and it dies on the vine, um, these can be incorporated when you come back with state changes to revisit this if you have specific direction from the boards. Certainly. I mean, that's more of a Todd question, but yes, we can. I mean, we're rewriting everything and we have a lot of emphasis as a group on 206 because of what we heard from the town. Right. So we're looking for appearance. That's a big agenda item for us, not a single like an agenda item. Um, yeah, I mean, everything's getting rewritten, which is kind of why we pushed this right up to the front. We're like, can we just get these passed and move on to the work we have to do? This is our prior year's work item, so we didn't want to mix yeah. it up with all the new stuff. We just, let's clear our plate first and then tackle us 100. Well, I think that in fairness to the council, I think if the boards can't come to a conclusion on accepted language moving forward, that rather than to just say no, it would be fair for us to say, no, but these are our suggestions to move this thing differently. We, we so, take direction very well. Right, but I, I think <laughs> it's not fair just to say no. I think that if we're going to, if we're going to sure. need to compromise, that we need to give the planning council some clear direction and on what, Get, we, I, we, what we can agree on, what we can't. So, I think given a task, we react pretty quickly and thoroughly. So if you said no, but we're there. Okay. Um, but like having this bounce back and forth and warned two, three times is pushing this, kicking the can way down the road for everything that we need and want to do, which we're probably going to rewrite anything to your point. So it's, right. so right, we'll see what that's my little plea. Yeah. Yeah, there are 43 versions of town plan. <laughs> what typically happens, Chris, uh, when the select board and trustees approve zoning, they approve 95% of what's there, 90%, whatever the percentage is. And there's a few items that are controversial that can't come to uh, unison on, and we leave those on the cutting room floor. So uh, you move most of the things here, and you say, well, we have a problem with these two. And you say, well, we're not going to pass these. We can't agree with the trustees. Uh, here's some direction to planning council to write them in the future. So what you do is basically you pass what you can. If there are things you can't pass, you can leave them, you can kill them. But the rest of it goes through, and there's got to be most of the stuff in there should be fine. And the things you can't come to consensus with the village on, uh, you can give us direction and either one of you will give us direction. I'm sure you both will as how to rewrite them. But the select board doesn't make the major changes. The language is set up uh, to use the sports analogy, the ball is on the tee and you just have to hit the ball uh, under the fairway, a golf analogy, it's seasonal. Um, if the trustees or select board has a problem with like, let's say section 206, you pass the rest of the zoning, your motion is to approve the zoning proposed with the exception of section 206, which the planning council is directed to do X, Y, and Z with. That's typically what happens. And that keeps us moving too. Okay. We can't do, I, I can't do the S100 until I finalize this is only a bylaw. I can, I can accept the changes and I roll it into the next. I can't have multiple drafts of the bylaw going. That's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. So we can, we can move on. Yeah. All right. No action be taken. Right. Your next hearing is the public hearing. Right. And after that, so the next meeting is the audience's meeting. They all comment. The meeting after that, the audience is up to you. That's your debate. And you make a motion to approve the zoning proposed, the zoning minus uh, number three, four, and five, whatever it might be. And hopefully you uh, reconcile that with the trustees. You make the same motion. Otherwise, it's ping pong ball time. Well, when, when we have the hearing, are you going to be here? You'll be here. Of course, yes. And will the planning commission be here? Will you be fielding the, the question? Of course, yes. Okay. Yep. Happy to help anyway. So again. we're just basically 
just taking in information. Yeah, you're there. Honestly, the select board doesn't have to say a word at the hearing. It's a public hearing. You can talk if you want to. I know Laura has some background. She's been on planning in DRB. I mean, she probably has some background on some of these changes. So yes, you can talk, of course, but you don't have to say thank you for the comment. Thank you for the comment. And then uh, you guys deliberate on the November 6th meeting and then make a vote at that meeting. And the trustee vote would be, I think, I don't have a calendar whenever yet, but uh, whenever that trustees are first and third Wednesday, we don't have a calendar. So, right as of right now, you're both going to have the hearings in October. So, your hearing is the 16th, the, the trustees is the 18th. The way the calendar falls, the trustees are going to vote first. They'll vote on number first. You're voting number sixth. And in theory, in theory, you both make the same votes. We're good, and everyone has Thanksgiving, and we're all happy, and we're through the appeal period. If you don't, then you get into needing another meeting in November or December to try to reconcile from there. So the way the calendar falls, uh, trustees vote the first, you vote the sixth. The trustees sometimes will let you vote first. So the trustees may, if they're meeting on the 15th, may let you vote the sixth, and you can discuss that with them, and then maybe they'll vote the, maybe they'll vote the meeting on the 15th instead. But you discuss who gets to go first if you'd like to. That's usually part of your debate with them. Discussion. Yes. <laughs> Discussion, <laughs> debate, sure. Uh, thank you, Todd. Okay, thank you. All right, number five. We send the motion of August 7th, 2023, joint rules policy. And Judy has given us um, some information on a packet about joint rules appointment, and the trustees did not uh, approve it, so it, it's failed. Yes, the trustees made the motion and no one seconded it, so the trustees have no interest in these changes. Very they, flatly. So, so everyone realizes they refused to even vote on it. Correct. It was a uh, dead man walking. So does this mean, does Laura the, is Laura the one who has to then make the motion to rescind, or does not matter? Well, you can have separate rules. I mean, so going back to the zoning discussion, we have joint rules. We act like a joint community. We're not a joint community. We have the same bylaws. Mm -hmm. You could have a, se a separate joint rule that makes it awkward, and the trustees could have different joint rules with different rules that you follow and the trustees follow, but it's always best when we're all in the same boat, rowing in the same direction. So at this point, unless you want to table this to discuss at such a joint meeting with them, you, the, your only option really is to, you don't want to go a different direction with a different set of rules. You want to rescind it, rescind your changes, in my opinion. Or you table this until November 6th after joint meeting and discuss it more then. But they were pretty adamant. And no, I was the only one there to kind of to speak for, Tom was there, I think we were there, right? Yeah. We were the only ones there to speak for the joint rules and they weren't having the joint rules changed. I would like to make a motion that we table this until the meeting. I'd like to hear it from them. That's my feeling. Well, nothing's going to happen until uh, until after that. Any, I mean, nothing's going to happen with this because it's the trustees aren't going to abide by it. So we can talk about it on the twenty fifth, and then if we need to rescind it, we will. Yeah, I, I just would like to talk to them. I'd like to I'd like to hear them, yeah, so hear them comment on it. Why they table to the member sixth and have a discussion with the trustees in the interim. That's a good I make course a motion of action. Table to table this. Until November 6th, when we can talk to the trustees. The table the uh, joint rules. Joint rules, thank you. I'd second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Motion is passed. All right. Number six, approve Morristown Historic Society request to remove, replace, and reglaze 10 windows at Noise House Museum. Is that you? I am the select board rep to the Noise House Museum. Oh, okay. By charter, one of you is supposed to serve on that board. I serve on your behalf. Um, Thank if you. someone wants to take my place on that board, I'm happy yes. to do so. But I've done it for quite a few I'm, years. And, I'm fine with okay, that. Okay, good. Um, uh, I'm going to let Josh speak to this real quickly. Before I do, um, Josh is the one who's done all the work on the windows. I just want to remind the select board that you guys own the Noise House Museum. The, the, the board, the Morristown Historical Site, does not own the museum. We're a tenant. Right. We lease the building. That building received zero dollars on last year's budget. You can name another 1820s building that got zero dollars for rehab or for maintenance last year around here. I'd be shocked. That building got zero dollars last year. And most importantly, the last handful of years, it'd be getting a half penny vote in the town meeting every year. So it got $38,000 a year to do very important work over there. And the voters voted that down. So unless you put that in the budget again, 
for the voters, you've got to put money into the budget otherwise. So either you put the half penny up again, or there's going to be money built into the budget. As a, Donnie can speak to this too. There's a huge amount of work that needs to be done at the museum. The barn is sitting on the ground. It's rotting. It needs concrete work. The, we're only, we can only afford to do 10 of the windows. There are more than 10 windows in that building. This, you can't go, go to RK Miles and throw in double hungs in that building. I mean, they're old historic windows. This is the reglazing process. So my overall plea to you as a rep is this building needs serious budget help and it needs to be considered in next year's budget. Or you try to go to the voters again and do the half penny again because without it, we're in serious trouble. Well, the building already doesn't have a heating source. It freezes and thaws every year, which I know the museum collection pieces, pieces like. As someone who has a building in northern New England, I would not let my building sit and freeze and thaw every year. Uh, that's not something I would do, but that's just an example of something the building doesn't have. We don't even have a heating system in the building, so budget's an important issue. Um, is Tina here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tina, would this not fall under um, this the funding we have for building maintenance? and We have a Noise House Museum building maintenance fund, which currently has $53,000 in it. This will about wipe this out. We can afford right. to do 10, maybe 12 windows. Other than that, there is no money in the budget for the Noise House Museum. Correct. So it cannot fall under other, or the general it building. Would if it had been voted in the budget to, but nobody put okay. any money in, in the current year that we're in's budget for the Noise House. It had 53,000 in it. I don't know what they even need for, you know, okay. money. I, I have no clue. Okay. So couple, legally couple, we can't. Hundred thousand. Yeah. Oh, I'll just just bring it right in. <laughs> so, so legally we can't touch that money in, unless we get it voted on. To no, the fifty-three thousand is up to you guys to, yeah. to use how you see fit to do maintenance on the noise house. After the fifty-three, we don't have any money in the budget until next year if the voters vote like a half a cent, like Todd was saying, which a half a cent's roughly fifty some odd thousand dollars. Could we, in the future, incorporate it into the general building fund as opposed to having its own line item? That was actually what we wanted to do, uh -huh. but there were so many huge projects that we decided at the time to do a half set on the on the um, brand list to raise money quicker. Because if you I put two hundred thousand dollars in our general fund just for the Noise House Museum, that percentage of operating. Um, maintenance like goes skyrocketing, so it was decided to do it separately until it got to a point where we were truly just maintaining it and not doing any <coughs> maintenance projects. Okay, thank you. We're, we're closer to that. We're not quite there. We've redone the roof. We've redone a lot of parts of the building. We re, we, the chimneys are about to collapse. We've uh, we bolstered the chimneys. They're not going to collapse anymore. We've done some of the plaster walls and plaster ceiling work, but there's significant more work to do, especially with the barn. So I would offer this. Um, the special article um, that was voted down by the public um, would have given you, uh, I think, a, another half penny. Correct, half penny was this. So <laughs> it would have been about $30,000 based on our last. Yeah, 33 somewhere, right. I guess. So I guess what I would like to see happen to move this conversation along is um, that the noise house come in during our budget process and talk about short and long term goals. Uh, on the building. It is a municipal <clears throat> building. It yes. is our responsibility, just like the library is. And maybe offer us some schedule, some costs, mm -hmm. so that we can take a look at immediate needs and long term needs and see how that will work into a general line item in our budget versus as a special article, yeah. because it just ends up being at the whim of the voters. And I think this is an important historic piece in the, in the community, but we're not going to break the bank right off. Yeah. So I think that. Understood. Coming up with a, a plan. It's not a problem. We have a report done by a historic preservation person. Yes. We went to the select board and had a similar discussion as probably about eight, nine months ago. I'm not sure. Were you here for that too? You're now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's within the last year and a half, even here about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've done that. We have that already. We can, that's, I mean, your next agenda okay. if you want to. Whenever you have time, we can come back and bring well, that back in. Why, why, don't you, why don't you forward that information to the board so okay. we have a chance to digest it? Sounds good. And then when we start talking about budgets, we'll have a further this conversation. Sounds good. And Josh can talk hey, about the actual window. Are we going to approve the window? We're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good idea, Chris. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. It's a little off topic, I think, as far as the agenda item, because we're trying to we're trying to do the most important things for the building right now. And moisture is getting in and we're going to take the 10 worst windows out of something like 27 and seal them up. 
Um, I did all the vetting of the guy. I don't think I need to talk about Soul Source. If you want me to, I will. He's the guy for the job. Um, this is what we have right now. And Donnie can attest, like we have said, like, what can we do with this money to best suit this building? And this is it. So I hope this passes tonight. I agree with that discussion, but let's not forget that things that go into the budget can get voted down by voters too, like three times. So I'm a little more uh, uh, friendly to the half penny. It's a nice number that we can count on year after year and we can long-term forecast our projections and say, okay, here's what we have because we could throw half a million dollars at the building to make it what it needs to be. I mean, I spend more. <laughs> but if we have a number that we can use every year, in either way, six and one half dozen the other, it can be in the budget, it can be the half penny. But now we can long term plan and say, okay, what's the worst of the worst? But I hope with this little bit of money that we have from the year prior, because we're not getting it this year, that we can do this. We, we have all agreed as a board with Donnie's help and, and others, like, this is the best way to use this money. And it's, we're, we're asking for, I think, 40 of the 53, and I'm leaving a lot of cushion. If we can have more than 10 windows, more better. But like, I'm using the worst estimate and hoping that we can get 10 done. He's gonna seal everything up. So it's the best use of our money right now. Right? So, so really what you're looking for the board to do is to approve $40,000 coming out of the, the budget. It's our money. We're just asking you to right. give it to us right. out of the piggy bank. Well, like it's our piggy bank. <clears throat> Can we have it? If the town is going to be paying for this and the Noise House Museum, it is the town's um, property. We really should have you vote for a sole source vendor. As Josh said that um, they have a special person that does this. You should vote sole source vendor and go enter a contract with them like we would anybody else just to keep us our rules for the accounting procedures and our purchasing um, policies. That's okay with you. Sure, yeah. I, we agree. Yeah, yeah. and um, That's what we ask as well. right. And okay. sole source means you don't have to get other vote you know, other bids from anybody else. Okay, I'll so. Step, yeah. I'll just say no, I'll just, I'll just, well, like, so, I mean, we searched another vendor, she's the best, and Jill's on the board, obviously, and knows everything about architecture and history, so I searched her vendor, and the lady was like, I'd love to, like, can't, you know? So, like, this guy, that's all he does, so he's qualified, he's vetted, he's, he's walked through the museum with all of us, he knows what he's doing. Um, and to boot, like, so we have money for Donnie to do work that he won't do. Like, we also have to take out window sills, scrape them, replace them. So we have money left. In the, so there's cushion, cushion, cushion. I'm giving somewhat worst case scenario with 40, but like, if we don't spend it, great. It's still in our piggy bank and we'll come <laughs> ask for it again. But, okay. you know, there's a little room there and I hope that we can use it what's for what needs the, to be what's done. What's the name of the vendor? Willard Street Tradi Traditions. He's right in Craftsbury. I mean, it's what it's what he does. He does windows, old, old windows. There right? are not many people who reglaze old windows. Anymore. No, right. it's a dying yeah. artist. Yeah. Like two or three people all over. And he's right here. And just to speak to the process, he's going to take the ten worst out, which he identified. He's going to put them in his shop for the winter and do all the work. He's going to weatherize the building. You know, as much it, to Todd's comment, it's not climatized. It just needs to be weatherized. Donnie's going to help like scrape the window sills that we need and get like lasting paint on the sills that's keeping moisture in and we're, we're putting band-aids on right now for forty thousand dollars band-aids so we should look long term i uh i'll make a motion to approve the morristown historical society's recommendation to have Willard street traditions remove replace and replace 10 of the worst windows at the noise house museum for approximately forty thousand dollars with the condition that we receive a contract does that work? And that we would, and we would include that as a sole source contract. And we would include that as a sole source. Thing. Can you add a clause that that money also includes Donnie Blake to do the sill work, like we talked about? He's got to do some minor <coughs> pre and post work. So it's forty thousand dollars plus some of Donnie's minor carpentry work to get the windows ready and to board them up when they're missing. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. So just add that clause and include Donnie's work. Yeah. Or not clause. Three. So really the motion would be that we would approve $40,000 for work to be done uh, for uh, yes. the 10 windows 
as a sole source contract with Willard Street Traditions, which would also include necessary work done by uh, Donald Blake, I think. Yeah. 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 So we're looking at the duty to see if she got that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So are you seconding that? I just made it and said it. <laughs> I'll second it since, he, since Chris said it uh, correctly. Okay. Yes. All right. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion is passed. Yay. All right. Next, Aye. private road naming, Dr. Tinker Street. Thank you, Thank Josh. Thank you, Josh. So we have a request for a new road name. Uh, it's the road that goes down to Copley Terrace off from Washington Highway. They're requesting to name it Dr. Tinker Street. And Mark Sutton from Copley Hospital is here uh, to talk about it. Help me introduce yourself, please. Sure. <clears throat> My name is Mark Sutton. I'm the director of facilities at Copley Hospital. <clears throat> so we've been working with, um, I think this is the third administration now, for the last several years to try to get this uh, driveway turned over as a road uh, that goes from Washington Highway all the way down to uh, to the terrace. So we've made uh, a number of uh, improvements to the to the roadway. It is 20 feet wide. Um, we had it uh, two years ago. We had it reground and repaved along with the sidewalk that goes from Washington Highway all the way down to the terrace. Uh, we've re uh, we faced all of the light post bases and re-anchored all the light posts all the way down. So working with uh, the town administration, town administrators, and the highway superintendent, those are the things that they've asked us to do in order to uh, potentially turn this road over to the town. So that's what we're looking at doing. First part is to, um, to rename the road. So we are trying to rename the road in a memory of the first physician ever at Copley, which is uh, Dr. Tinker. So, and we were trying to um, it keep, no right it has no name, it's Washington Highway right now. So all the way down through, it's Washington Highway. So this is just name change. This is not changing it from private to public. This is just putting a name on it. You're right. not adopting it right. okay. tonight. Yep. Uh, okay. Thank you. And so we were trying to, you know, we work with E911, you know, and the town, town's folks on, on the road name, trying to keep it so the name's not this, this long on a street sign. So uh, that's, that's our efforts there. So. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we, um, uh, that we rename, what's the previous? It's Washington Highway. It's not, there's not a, there's not no a name. name. That, Correct. Uh, yeah, we, okay. So I uh, make the motion that we, um name the road we're speaking of the to dr tinker street i don't know a better way to identify the well it would be a it would be a private road naming so yeah. be naming a private road to dr tinker street and yeah. that the town of morristown would install a sign in the post okay. Yes. Yes. Was it? I'll second everything second. I just said. Okay. Good. Thank you. Oh. So, so can I ask a clarifying question? Yes. So our goal is to turn this into a town road, a town street. So if we're doing this now as a private road, then do we have to? I don't know what the next steps are to to move it forward. But let's that's vote good. on the motion. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll revisit. Okay. Your question. Sure. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Is this going to change the manor's address? Yes. Yeah. And the tariffs. Okay. And uh, Mansfield Orthopedics. And they're, mm -hmm. they're all aware of it. Question. And Bill, are uh, you aware of that? That was my question because needless to say that is uh, we did a heat map of EMS responses uh, uh, on the manor oh. of the tariffs or frequent places for us. So we need to know when these changes are effective, uh, how E911 is being involved. Yep. And, uh, um, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the first step, my understanding was to come here, get approval on the road name, which I think that's what we're trying to do right now. We've worked with E nine one one and with your E nine one folks from the town's office. Uh, we they helped us to sign the name that was appropriate, so everybody was okay with that. And then we have to notify 
all the people that it's going to impact and change. And Todd, you can speak to that process, right? Um, I am not your 911 coordinator. I work eight feet from the 911 coordinator, so I know it's to be dangerous. But yeah, so I can try me. But I'm not. Abby's your 911 coordinator. I'm not Abby. It's right. a, a listers, but I work eight feet from her, so I should be able to answer most questions you ask. Well, the process of going from private to public, I think, is the question. And you just want to know the next step. You, you'll have to have the on-site hearing. You want it just like any other road. You're supposed to give when we just discussed this as part of the zoning thing. Right. When you name a road, you're supposed to give an indication if it's going to be remain private or potentially be a public road. In this case, it's not as important because the road's already built. Normally, they're designing the road and it's going to be right. yay big or yay big. In this case, the road's there, so it's not as critical. But at some point, if you're going to entertain making this a public road, you've got to go through the process to lay out the road, have the on-site hearing. I think it's 45, this is more administration. After 45 or 60 days, you have to vote on it. 45 or 60? 45? 45 days, yeah. So you have a process that you do with other roads. Same process. And as it is currently private, are they not responsible for um, paying for the sign? Highway can do it, but are they? They would currently be responsible right now. They would currently yes. be responsible. You can put it up yourself or yes. highway department can install it for you. Normally, if you have them install it, the bill would cost you around $200. Don't quote me though. Tina? Right, yeah, probably itself. a little bit steep, but yes. Okay. Put the longer size when you sign itself. It will be much more. So, so the only piece to this is what they're working with. With the in the town, is they wanted to make it a street, which is what the town does for town roads and streets. Private road would be could be different. It could be lane or drive or something different. So, I I don't want to like. I don't want to uh, upset the stuff that we oh, already talked about, so I want to make sure that we don't un undo what your your person, your E nine one one person suggested that we do. So that's what's on the application is exactly okay. what she said. Good. So I just Good. want to make sure that you yeah. have all the information. Yeah, right. thank you. Yeah. So, Todd, a, a private road cannot be a street. Um, there is like an etymology to how we do road names. Yeah, streets are in the village, roads are in the town. Things that are lane are usually dead end. Um, this road probably won't be a dead end at some point. That corn, this road is going to loop through that cornfield. That's um, well, the is that something? Yeah, it'll grease probably out to the armory. So this is going to be okay. a loop road at some point. Um, so streets appropriate. This is going to be a through road in the village right. very but soon. It, but okay, that's a whole different topic. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So there's no issue with us approving yeah. that it's a street. No, if they were if, if they were proposing a name that wasn't town okay. It may hinder them getting the road accepted. They don't want to do okay. that. They're saying, we're, this is not their ideal road name. We'll take this road name because we want to keep going on the process to get this turned over to the town. Okay. Correct. Yes. yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> All right. So, so you got a motion. Do we have a motion? We have a motion. Okay, a second. second. Yeah. Yeah. What's the motion Here. again? Just accept the name. Just That's what I want to do. Yep. Okay. Come on up, Bill. Um, just uh, an, an additional question. Just, Uh, it's probably something Willie and I should talk about outside of the meeting. But um, uh, Copley Terrace is an elderly assisted living facility, as you may be aware. Uh, virtually every resident of that building has a medical alarm system with <laughs> different vendors. And I'm concerned about how quickly, I realize we're in the infancy of the project here, but how quickly we can get those vendors on board with the the name change and how do we facilitate yeah. that yeah i don't think i mean we're trying to do this has been like i said it's been quite some time so we'll work through the process with you all to make it happen right. you know we won't we won't just flip a switch and say sorry you have to do this but we'll you know there's a process right. to notify all of the residents that this is going to impact which will mm -hmm. also include notifying all of their you know, medical providers all of those kinds of so, so we'll work through okay. with them right. for sure. All right, just want to be a so little forward leaning on that because be in con communication with Bill because that was sure. before yeah, maybe yeah. before we, yeah. maybe yeah. we really make it official. Right. Before we change the name, I don't know. What do you think, Bill? Um, I, I think it's for, I think it's okay to go ahead as we are here, just as long as we're in the loop going okay. forward. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Road name has been accepted. All right. You got a bit? Yeah. All set. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. 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 Thank
Yeah. yeah. I mean, unless somebody else has these questions. No. So, no. no we, we, the name change has been accepted. Perfect. Yeah. And yeah. we'll follow the next process. Okay. Thanks, everybody. For Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Number eight, ROW application for South Street. So we got a right away permit application to for an installation of conduit for underground utilities. The paperwork's been filled out properly. The project will be approved by the highway superintendent once it's completed to make sure it's back up to the way it was or better from when they started. Could we have Kevin speak to it? Sure. Can you come up, Kevin? Introduce, introduce yourself, please. Kevin Barrow is the highway superintendent. So just kind of walk us through, you've reviewed this and, and it meets all of your needs and do you understand exactly Well, all my doing? needs are making sure the road gets put back the way they right. found it. Okay. Or in better an issue with the, No. We'll just cut across. How they put the electrical in the ground, that's between them and the water and light. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just didn't know if you had any thoughts or... Nope. Okay. Any other questions for Kevin? Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion. Oh, it's me. I would make the motion to approve the application for right away uh, permit uh, for the installation of conduit for underground utilities um, as a 911 location of 5 Winter Street, 28 South Street, and 62 South Street. A motion for a second? Second. A motion a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Do we have any timeline how long this will take? To my knowledge, they're just waiting to get the approval. Their equipment's on site and they're going to start it as soon as possible. So it's pretty quick, just for. Unless maybe. Hi, hi. Can I'm Lisa Preby. I represent Mink Development and the okay. timeline to complete. Um, the road will be back to paved by November 15th. Uh, there will be temporary interruption during the day while the excavation is going on, but it's actually scheduled to happen next week, Monday, Tuesday. Okay. So, and a brand new sidewalk. Brand new sidewalk. Yeah. So to Kevin's point, the road will probably be in better condition when we're done on November 15th than what it was before we started. So the so really traffic interruptions just so there's so one house at the end of the street that's actually our own tenants mm -hmm. um their traffic interruption would be during the day when most of them are probably at work okay yeah I was looking at it. okay yeah so when they come home at night the road will be open okay and the businesses along there won't be affected there aren't aren't any there aren't any okay you know just, just strictly on south street yes the entire street okay oh right, right south yeah street, but they might have a problem Got it. Yeah, that's it. Question for you, Jason. Um, <laughs> do you sign this once the board approves it, or does it need to be signed by yeah, the board or the chair? Or you? The chair needs to sign it. Okay. So, so is this something, not in our packet, but it's a different form, or a different one in the packet? Uh, 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 okay, right. good. Thank so you. the motion should include authorizing yeah. the chair to sign it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> So a motion and a second? Oh, I'm sorry, come on. <laughs> My name is Jan Paris. I just had one comment I'd like to make about, I understand that you know when people dig up the roads and they put in their conduits or sewer lines or whatever, but what we're seeing here is that, and just for, for conversation, over where Mr. Mink dug the road up, route, the old Route 100, about two years ago, that's now a, a dip in the highway. I mean, that used to be perfectly smooth. They had repaved the whole area and it was beautiful. And every time we let somebody dig, it's, it's great when they're done today, but next year after all the trucks and everything have gone over this, it's all depressed down in. And somebody needs to come back and redo that because it's not as good as it was before they dug up the highway. That's, that's my comment. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Aye. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'll talk to Kevin later about it. So, Richard, did you go Aye. ahead? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Motion is passed. Number nine, approve and sign errors and admission certificate. Is this? Is this is, does anybody speak to this? Or we look at it ourselves. 
So you have, there's two of them on, you have all have it in front of you. There's two of them. Uh, the first one had two dwellings on it. And it was already subdivided. The second one was a subdivision that had a dwelling on it at the time of reappraisal and was added as a section number two on the above account. So the, the uh, listers have already signed off on that, on this, is that correct? Correct. So it's their uh, attestation to us that um, these are accurate. Um, so I would, um, I would make the motion to accept the errors and omissions certificate for Edwin A. Lair and uh, Barber Construction and Development Corporation. I'll second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? I'm not arguing with that. What, is, what that means, the errors and omissions. What? So what they did is um, when they went through and did the reappraisal, okay. um, they made the appraisal for Mr. Alair of $345,100, um, but they discovered that had two dwellings on it uh, when it was already subdivided. Um, it made a difference like, apparently okay. in their appraisal, so they reduced it by 91,000. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the it's an adjustment, an adjustment on the appraisal. Okay. And the second one went up 201,000. Because there was an addition added, correct? Right. One. So you have a motion. All right. All those in favor? Um, aye. aye. All right. <clears throat> approval. Errors and omissions have been approved. Set the tax rate for fiscal year 2023 2025. Sarah, you want to speak to that? Yeah. Or is it Sorry, tag. The bank will be swinging in the town square. Tag <laughs> So Sarah, Sarah and I both together. I proofread it. She proofreads it and then we put it in Nemric to make sure it's correct. Um, have calculated the municipal highway, well, the municipal tax rate, and the other two tax rates to be approved are set by the state. You just have to accept them. So um, I've got some motions down there, and okay. this is what everything turned out to be. Thank and it, you. And it turns out that um, the projection that we had been using along um, was, was specifically that number. So. We were spot on. So, Tina, I'm going to ask you a question. So, the residential tax, residential right. education tax, and non residential education tax are set by the state. That's right, but you have to vote to accept it. Okay. That's All right, thank you. So, I would make uh, three separate motions. I would move to set the municipal tax rate of um, 69, uh, 0.6989 cents. I have a motion on a second. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The uh, municipal tax rate has been accepted. I would move to accept the residential education tax rate of $1.356. Uh, $1 All have a motion and a second. Second. Got a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? All those yeah. in favor? I'm right. sorry. Oh, come on, go ahead. Oh, right. uh, Tony Cody, Cody Hill. So this this uh, education tax, is there a way that we as a community can work on getting that lower? Um, I know the state mandates it. The, the state set the rate, so I'm not quite sure how that works. Well, I think the rate is somewhat based on um, the common level of appraisal, but also the um, the uh, school budget. It all gets factored in at the state level, and then they set the tax rate based on. So it's all it's, it's all it all comes from the. Uh, so it starts at the school board. It starts at the local level, and then that that. Um, that budget gets translated to the state into a state tax. So we as town people can't, we don't really have, a, we don't have a say over nothing. We do when the school is having budget discussions. Just like you come here to talk with us, you can go to a school board meeting and talk with them about their budget. And there's all kinds of formulas that go into it too, more so than the municipal budget that I'm not familiar with. But it starts at the local level. Yeah. 
but yeah, you, you vote on the school tax budget just like the municipal. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then I would move to accept a non residential education tax of $1.1803. I have a motion and a I'll second. second that. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the tax rate for the fiscal year has been set. Number 11, Halloween road closure for 2023. So Halloween in Morrisville is usually a pretty uh, popular event. Uh, probably eight to 10 years ago, the select board decided to close some of the streets in the village to vehicle traffic. The highway department comes out, they close the roads off. And then everybody can go trick or treating without any vehicles. So it's the same streets as last year Maple Street, Cherry Ave, Harrison Ave, the east side of Union Street, Summer Street, and Court Street. And it's from 5 to 7 30 p.m. So we're just looking to get the select board's permission to the, do that again this year. Well, I would make that motion. I would approve closing um, the following streets in the village for trick or treating on Tuesday, October 31st, 2023, from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Streets are included of Maple Street, Cherry Ave, Harrison Avenue, the eastern side of Union Street, Summer Street, and Court Street. I will second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? <coughs> yeah, there's a couple landlocked ones that we need. Lincoln Street and um, Olive and East Olive. Need to be on Olive. East Olive? Because you can't get to them. They're, they're like off Cherry and Maple, so if you're closing them, they merge your year. All right. Well, then okay. I would amend my motion to include Lincoln and East <coughs> Olive Street. And Olive. Olive. East Olive, I think she said. Olive, Olive. 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 Olive and East Olive. Olive and East Olive. Okay, so three additional streets. I'll put the second. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Then accepted. <coughs> Approve and sign annual financial plan. Uh, Tina Sweet, Finance Director. This annual financial plan has to be filed no less, no more than 60 days after uh, budgets passed. So that's why I'm bringing it to you now. It's a state form that basically tells the state how much money we intend to spend on our roads. Right. So it just needs to be signed by you folks. So question, um, so this is an annual financial plan for town highways. Yes. Um, and this pertains to um, state uh, uh, road assistance coming back to the municipality. Yeah, I believe that they use this not only for um, the road assistance, but potentially for structures grants. It states on here, um, if you're if you're doing anything special, they need to know about it. Um, like bridges, how much you've budgeted to do these things, and it tells you how much money you spend for class one, two, and three roads. Okay. So it's state aid to, to right, roads. state aid to highways. Okay. And the whole board signs off on this if it yes, I believe so. Okay. Well, I would move to accept the uh, annual financial plan for town highways for the state for beginning seven one twenty three through uh, six thirty twenty four. I'll second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? How much? Go ahead. How much money? Uh, Come on up to the microphone. I'm sorry, Tom Pudi. How much money are we talking? What? So this is the breakdown. You can have my copy. Was, you know, on. This was in uh, budget. It's so a, yeah. 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 So oh, that's that's in just in the packet. Yeah. She said it's in the packet. It's all mine. Okay. It's online. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. We've got, all right. We got so, one. Did we vote? No, we didn't. No. So I made a motion. Okay. Now we have a second. <coughs> and all those in favor? Aye. 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 And it is passed. Number 13, approve forming a town manager search committee. This is one of the first steps in hiring a town manager. We're looking to form a town manager search committee that would be responsible for assisting and advising the select board in the search for a town manager. 
The number of committee members is uh, still up in the air, but estimated to be around five to nine, which is made up of members of the public, uh, as well as select board members and potentially town employees. Uh, at this point, you know, we're looking to see if anybody is interested in being part of this committee to send a letter of interest expressing your qualifications and experience to Judy L. Berry. So question, um, if we're going to be, I mean, it's announced tonight that a, we're going to make a motion to approve um, a town manager search committee and concept. Um, but we will put out on um, our municipal website um, the fact that anybody from the public that would like to serve on it would, we would solicit, you know, they could submit it in the, in the requirements to do that, what we're looking for, just so that that's part of this whole discussion, that that will be something that will happen. Yep, they will make it on the website. Probably by next week at the latest. And we don't have a deadline here. No, we could put a deadline. Okay. So are we looking to approve this exact or? We're just looking to see if people are interested, who is interested on in being part of this search committee. And if they are interested to submit a letter. It's just a solicited interest in being Just soliciting. Right. Correct. But we're not held to any of this specific. No. Not at this no. point. All we're doing is making a motion to approved forum in a committee and um, an announcement that members of the public could submit um, their desire to, to serve on such committee. Do we want to put a, a date certain or? Um, this, has, this has December 1st. Is that a hard text? It's a social service policy. Oh, sorry. Today's a second. Two weeks, sure. Be the same. Well, if you're not, are you going to have it on the website this week or next week? Okay. So uh, by the 16th, you think? Can we? Can we <coughs> is there time for news and citizen? Oh, Tommy. Um, I can uh, now open on news and citizen this week. Nice. Monday. We missed, yeah, we but, missed it. But it would go yeah, in next Monday. Monday. Next Monday. But yeah. it won't get out till Thursday. We just need to. Out. I think we need to delay it until we can get it in News and Citizen, um, even if... Um, For the two weeks forward. Yeah. You could say October 31st. Yeah, because yeah, this is way too important to not get it, have it out there. I don't want applica you know, applications, so it, even if one, somebody writes a letter to the editor, it needs to, we need to make sure that it's in News and Citizen so October 31st? I think, sure. Yeah. I was thinking the week of the 23rd. The 23rd, because I would still allow it to be in the paper, yeah. and we're not obligated to have a discussion about that at a meeting. Yeah. Um, so you're saying, so what's... The week of the 23rd, sometime the week of the 23rd. So that's, that's three weeks out. Yeah. yeah. That's, that would work. The 23rd would the work. The 23rd? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that would, uh, if we can get it, um, Friday submit, it would cut, uh, be out on the to, uh, in the paper by the 12th, which gives it a whole week before the 23rd. Yeah, that's perfect timing. So okay. I, don't, I don't think my motion needs to include that. I think it's no. just a part of the conversation. So the motion is to uh, that the board would approve forming a town manager search committee. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. I had a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to give. Excuse me, Judy, for taking up so much time. There you go. I, I got one question. Is this? Are we? Can we be assured there are there is going to, there are going to be, or at least one, a community member on the search committee. Yes. Okay. Good. <clears throat> I was just wondering, uh, news and citizen. That's it. No, uh, I think yeah. I think we'll do social, social media, Facebook, front yeah. porch forum, about news and citizen. We're about to fill off your Times or the Dallas Times or something like that. Well, search committee. this is just a search committee of who wants to be uh, on the hiring bill. Where the where, where the uh... oh, that's a whole different discussion. That's all different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I just wanted. Uh, it's important because not everybody's on social media, so there are 
you know, there are people that are strictly newspaper. So we just need, it's too important to, to miss any kind of segment of the population. As no, no, I just know that they've been advertising for a town manager. Yeah, no, no, no. This, this is just for the search committee to pe for us okay, to decide who will that's be. Fine. To put a notice out that we're looking, you know, if you're interested. So you got a motion. Do we have a motion? <laughs> Okay, we have a second everything right, right? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, three. Number 14, discuss joint meeting select board and village trustees at VFW October 25th. Oh, you know what, Judy? We have a social service agent. Okay, never mind. Old business. Coming Old up. Business. Never mind. No. Coming up. Never mind. So right. last, this is the last thing for new business. In the past, the select board has met with the village trustees. I think it's happened up to the golf course. Uh, so this is similar to that, but we're proposing that we do it at the BFW, which we've confirmed they are, they are open that night, available be on October 25th. Uh, we cannot zoom it there, uh, but there is plenty big enough to hopefully hold everybody that wants to go to it. I would make a motion that we, um, that we, um, uh, Approve uh, a joint meeting with the um, trustees at uh, VFW on October 25th. Do we have a time? Regular time, 5.30. 5.30. So 5.30 on October 25th at the VFW. I have a second. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, I, I have huge concerns that it's not being Zoomed. So we looked into Zooming oh, no. it, but we just don't have the technology to do it. I think that's a real issue. Personally, it's a big meeting. Um, I'm not sure how to um, go forward. Uh, what are? Yeah, it's just difficult finding a area yeah. that can hold enough people and to where we have the ability to zoom. Yep, that's a problem. Um, okay, well. We got to get an event space in this town. <laughs> we talked with Green Mountain. There's no way they can facilitate or. This camera is the camera here, so I don't. I'd be happy to double check, but in the past it hasn't been an possibility. Yeah, no, it's an off. Um, okay, well. What if they the school? The um, um yeah, are there because the schools have audio? Is there any way to? I doubt they have it, and uh, there's not going to be in the. The school is a little difficult to reserve and. Uh, and it's a different no, system. No, we have schools in session, so there's activities going on. Right, and it's not um, our system. It's because we're set up through the specific camera, correct? Yeah, this all this equipment's not even ours. It's through GMA TV or. Um, okay, I just would like us to look into possibly we can't zoom, but find a way to record it if it's. You know, um, I mean, I have a ca you know a digital camera that'll record, but I, you know, just thinking some way that we can make it accessible. Um, it's not a great option, but I think we need to. We can look into it and see. Yeah, I mean, we got a, we got almost three weeks, so we can. Yeah. Is something it, changes. I mean, if we can make it happen, we'll make it happen. It's just. Yeah, I just. Um, I mean, what does the public think if we? could get it recorded and not have it interactive. I don't want to open this up for discussion yeah. right now, but let's have a select board discuss what we're going to discuss. I was saying, get in your car, it'll be okay. Well, yeah, I agree. Well, it makes a difference whether I vote for or against it if it can't, if the public can't have access to it. So we well, can what we're, fine, what we're hearing from Jason is that we don't have, we won't have an answer tonight. We can't get an answer tonight. If um, there ends up being a way that we can do it, we'll do it. But I mean, we have to check with the village trustees too to, you know, make sure they're good with it. But and this is something that has to happen before for the zoning 
It's kind of I, going back. Ideally, so otherwise, drag your feet on this. Yeah, okay. you, ideally, you'd want to meet with them before that. So right. I would suggest that we make the motion. We've made the motion. That we accept the motion. If it's a, if we're there's a way to zoom it, we'll zoom it. If we there's a way to record it, we'll record it. But okay. it's a work in progress. So, any discussion? <coughs> Did we have? Did we get a motion? I made a motion. You made a motion. Yes. Yes. A second. Second. Okay. okay, good. So we're on the discussion. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Even though Tony was out of order, I agree. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Next, old business approve social service policy. <laughs> Who would like to address this? <laughs> this was very much a joint effort between Judy and I. I was the typer, but Judy collected the information and the feedback from that she received from you. Um, there's not a lot of wiggle room that you guys have with um, changing your current policy. You can decide if you're going to require petitions or if you're not going to require petitions. You can't cap the amount of petition because that's voter suppression. Um, you can decide if you're going to require them to attend um, a select board meeting or, or some do a presentation and um, how often. If you uh, require a petition you can re you can decide how often you want to do them and you can decide if you're going to um, do each article separate or if you're going to lump them all into one um, but besides that there's there's not a lot of um, a lot of wiggle room to to there was some other feedback that judy got of things that you guys wanted um, looked into like we can't ask them if they are a 501c3. Uh, we can't ask them for any federal ID number or proof. Um, can, can we require, uh, can we line out them every year? Yes, you can choose if you want to make them a line item every year. Every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we do now. Right. No, no your current your that's what you did last yes, year. Yes, um, you kind of went against your policy because um, the policy was written based on town meeting a floor vote. Um, but last year, when the governor had the emergency legislation that allowed us to have town meeting by ballot, um, the voter the board at that time decided to separate everything but your written policy had been that you lump right. everything so i would suggest a couple changes in uh, what was proposed here um i don't think it's necessary for um, service organizations to come back every three years um, with a new petition i think that the voters get to decide what it is they want to approve and what they don't want to approve. I can see a new petition on two factors. One is if uh, a request is increased. So if Memorial Home Health and Hospice asks for $15,000 this year and they ask for $25,000 next year, that would, that would uh, stimulate a new petition. Or if an art, if an article fails, so if uh, Memorial Home Health and Hospice they get voted down um, to get back on the special article, they would come back with a petition. But I think that if they were if they were on the ballot this year, they get approved for X amount of dollars. They shouldn't have to come back with a new petition. They would just fill out a form that says we want to be reinstituted on that. Is that correct? on the ballot. So, um, the other uh, piece is um, on the second page where it talks about previously approved social service agency requests. About two thirds of the way down, it talks about if the last day for filing the application falls on a Saturday, Sunday or legal holiday, then the deadline shall be extended to the next day, which is not a Saturday, Sunday or legal holiday. I would take that out. I would just say it should be extended to the next business day. I do. Um, I mean, because my understanding was this was 
Chris, that this was compiled by everybody's responses. Um, so, uh, that they took majority rules on the thing. So, like, my understanding was that, I mean, we can. I can see the responses still look towards me. Yeah, uh, is that correct? I took everybody's responses that they gave and incorporated them into this yes. as far as what the general feel was for the board. And this yeah. is what we came up with. So I just have and this. Then it's up to you folks to look at this as a final draft and yeah. say what you want in it, what you don't want in it. This okay. is kind of an overview. Okay. Um, and. Um, but it's not the final copy. That's for you okay. guys to decide tonight what comes out, what stays in. Okay. Um, and I would just agree with um, the, uh, the, I like the every three years partially because dynamics in town change. And I think there's a real issue if um, someone uh, that they just, they put one petition in and they get it for in perpetuity. Uh, which, you know, we currently have some that are very significant um, and it can really uh, affect the budget and things change what the town needs. So um, I feel like uh, every three years is just to keep it current. Um, and I personally um, wanted line out, all of them line out every year. The way this reads is only new, uh, new petitions would be line itemed. Um, so if they're not going to put a petition in every three years, then I would want uh, them line itemed every year. This has a line item every, every year. year. All right. of them? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Sorry, I didn't understand that. So you, you're saying, Laura, that you you want every every organization to submit a petition every three years? Well, if if it's if every uh, appropriation <laughs> is line itemed every year, that alleviates the need for another petition because they're right. voting. Right. It's redundant. Well, and they, so, they're also asked in here. It also says that they're supposed to provide a report. Yeah. Every three years, but so that covers that to me. Um. Yeah. So I yeah. I, as long as it's line itemed every year, I don't think what, they need to put in a new petition every three years. Right. That was my thing. Okay. Sorry, I didn't get that. Right. I, was, <laughs> I was also wondering about uh, before the annual meeting, agency must make a brief presentation. So we want to, and then I think somewhere else it says. To do a brief presentation like once every three years or whatever. But like having every organization do a brief presentation every year would be too much. That was my understanding. Yeah. So how this is written based on I think the feedback that we got from you guys, it is sort of confusing. But um so if you're a first time agency or you're asking for an increase of funding, yeah. then you would have to come before town meeting to explain, like at the informational okay. meeting, because you right. would be um, you would be a new okay. entity that nobody would know. So, like Salvation Farms did um, right. last yeah. last year, they came before town town meeting, and then how this is written is. Um, every three years okay then one once you're approved the first time then every three years after that you would have to make a presentation currently it's been five okay. um yeah. i would i would say that that we don't need that because if they want to come in i think we'd honor it but i don't think it should be a requirement because if they're being voted on every year chances are they're going to want to i would like to encourage them if we're having an informational i think that's really key um, at the informational, having done these in Waterbury, uh, that they uh, present at the, you know, have a table at the informational, because that's really the best. I, I again, I worry because um, our meetings currently are running very long, and if we start, if everybody starts coming in, um, and I just again, the voters are deciding, so I, I just don't think it needs to be a requirement every three years. I like that they, the social agencies have come in. It was really nice that uh, just a handful of them came in. It wasn't everybody. I'm saying they can if they'd like to. I just don't want to require them. To. Yeah. I'd like to require them. 
And I did reach out to the school today about my idea about stealing from Duxbury about the yeah. community day. I haven't heard back, but oh. I planted the seed. So um, for those of you that weren't at the meeting and don't know what I'm talking about, it's the idea of that first Saturday in January, inviting them all to have informational booths. And if they wanted to do a presentation, then they can or not, but a way to get the word out um, to get support for their organizations at a, at a big community. I managed the one in Waterbury for a couple of years. They did that, um, and it was uh, huge to have everybody there. And um, because a lot of people just don't real didn't realize what their services were or that they were part of the town. That, it's a great idea. So if we did the informational meeting, that would kind of qualify as that same thing. If you went to the informational meeting with your yeah. With your organization, that would satisfy that requirement, I would say, right? So we'd have to put that in there. Yeah, and then it and then it would free up your select board, right? I mean, yeah, that's why I was saying, let's drive them there as so, opposed to meeting. So maybe we put something in that says that that uh, so make a we, brief presentation either to the select board or to the community in some fashion. Um, if we, so can get really, the, if we can get the school, that'd be fantastic. A select board sponsored activity. There's really two two conversations. One is, is that any first time mm -hmm. um, yeah. application right. would make a presentation yes. to the select board, or if they got voted off the island in the previous uh, town meeting, they yes. would come back with a new request and have to come before the select board. New petition, yes. Beyond that, um, they would not necessarily be required to, but they need to provide information for both the town report as well as any kind of community function for the public to understand what it is that they're doing. Yes. I know we got critis not criticism, but suggestions from the public that they wanted to hear them at the select board meeting. So that's why I was saying every three years, well, we would come forward. We also didn't have the, the option of the informational. So I, I hear what you're saying, and I agree with that. But if, um, if we have an informational, that might be a a better option. I just again, these select board meetings are just tedious, and, and we just need to drive other things to. And because I, I don't want to short, I don't want to limit their time. But these five-hour meetings have got to stop. Sorry. Well, the other so, thing is, this isn't set in stone, so we can always yeah. change it, add to it. So. So I, I would make a suggestion on the second page in the second um, paragraph that's highlighted, at least on mine. That was before the annual town meeting, um, a new agency must make a brief presentation to the select board explain so that they that's clear that anybody applying for the first time or um, or uh, yeah, just would be a new agency and they need to make a presentation to the select board. And then if, I don't think that would meet your requirement though if they got voted off. Well, they would essentially be a new agency. Yeah, they'd, they'd be a new agency. <laughs> And I would. I love that you guys are calling us an island. <laughs> <laughs> I interrupted you. No. Sorry. Um, so I took out the oh, one, two, three, fourth paragraph where it's saying every three years the agency must submit a new petition. I took that out. Okay. Yep. Yep. They're oh, line okay. itemed every year. Yeah. And um, yeah, as long as they're all line itemed every year. Yes. Yes. And then. Um, the next business day versus Saturday, Sunday, or a legal holiday. Yeah, that's the LCT about that. Yeah. <clears throat> so. And then what about every three years? I Can we move that? I guess the question is if we're going to if we're going to make it an annual. Um, uh, an annual event of of a community day to talk about the budget and answer questions if it's in january um we would have those we would ask those folks to be a part of that we wouldn't necessarily need to have a presentation to the select board every three years unless it was voluntary okay i mean you could always add it in later if, it, if we find we need it right. so that's true yeah. let's strike that Yes. 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 Yeah, I would like to have some input from them if they're new or if there's status changes. That's all I mean. 
Is so would you like do you want to just go with these changes and we vote on the policy as is with the changes? Sarah, I think Sarah might go into our office and take these changes up. <laughs> Judy, yeah, that's, Judy really needs a final policy today because uh, it needs to get out to the social service agencies okay. tomorrow. Okay. All right. All right. Well, so I, mean, we, I, I can go through and just reaffirm what we've discussed okay. and then we can vote on it and then we can sign a final draft when it's ready. That's good. That would right. be great. All right. So there was really no substantive change. Um, on the first page, um, do we need to um, make it a line item in here saying that um, you, uh, under the circumstances that you would need a new petition is if um, your uh, a current allocation is uh, request is increased or uh, an article fails and they come back um, to the board for reapproval? Um, do we want to make that statement so it's clear? Yes. Judy and I had just. <laughs> okay. So that's so that's part one. Um, second paragraph of the second page, we would just say a new agency must make a brief presentation to the board. Um, we would make the change on uh, <coughs> next business day. Uh, in the third paragraph, we're striking the fourth and we're striking the sixth paragraph. <coughs> So you don't need a motion right now, right? Till this is typed up, or do we do? No, I need a motion now. Well, either a motion now or one. I think when it's, it's done. done. But you do have a question on oh, that. Okay. When before you go that far, but anyhow, I think so there's also an application to review before you finalize. Right. So why don't we why don't we take that? We've done this. We'll talk about this so we can approve both. So is there a question on the board? Hi, everybody. It's Heather Hobart. I wish that my video was working, but my computer is choosing not to work tonight. Um, so I can see all of you and you can't see me. I just want to say thanks for taking this up. Um, I did want to offer a suggestion around the informational session, which is that um, our organization, I know other um, social service organizations in the community get asked by the Morrisville schools to come to an informational session. Um, and I can't remember when that is, but we're coming to one anyway. So either we could combine efforts. Um, it might just be worth us looking into when that informational session might be um, so that uh, it could help social service agencies um, looking to you know, reduce redundancy and try to save on time because we are already tabling at the school um, one night a week. And I can't remember if it's in the fall or the spring, and there might be other social service organizations, folks who are, but I know that um, we always attend it. Um, and we'd be happy to, to come to this one. Uh, this is Sarah, the town clerk. Um, is it the school open house? I attended it on behalf of the town that happened the first week of school for the high school and then I think the elementary school is this week and it does all the social service agencies are there I went for the town and I um, taught about voting and we and registered people to vote and and everybody is uh, a lot of the agencies are there yeah I can't remember Sarah but I'll ask my staff um, if they learned that, that was the one to make sure that we're not going to a third, <laughs> potentially a third informational session. So I'll follow up with you in an email to you and Judy um, tomorrow just to make sure. Um, and just for the record, it, um, we have appreciated coming to select board meetings in the past just to give quick updates. Um, and I appreciate everybody's attention to making sure that your time and our time is used appropriately. So um, you know, we'd, we'd be happy to do either or. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, um, the open house, we this has to be done in January when our budget. So um, I think the one Sarah saying that that one was done in uh, fall. Uh, but thank you for bringing that up because we can look into it. All right, so what is our next step? Becky, sure. So, Becky. Can I ask a question? Sure. Process? Come on up here. I, well, 
I know. I know people on the on the. So yeah, can't well, I just want to ask a process question more. I'm Becky Ganya. I'm a Morrisville resident and the executive director of the Clarina Howard Nichols Center. I just wanted to ask: Are you looking for comments now? Normally, you wait till motion and then ask for comments. So I have comments, but I don't want to. Take them out of order. You're there. You're there. <laughs> right. And Sarah doesn't have to take twice, <laughs> possibly. Um, again, as, as Heather said, thank you for, for looking at this. Um, we receive appropriations from 10 other towns, so we're well versed, as most of our organizations are, in the different processes. I appreciate the conversation about petitions. Um, none of the other towns that we get appropriations for ask for petitions on either an annual or every three years or any other time other than what you're talking about. Um, so we appreciate you considering not doing that. Um, we really we would prefer to do the annual event um, like you're talking about and come to a meeting um, part of the benefit for this is you're helping us raise awareness about the work we do like there you're looking at a very specific benefit do the taxpayers know what we do we're looking at who knows about our hotline who knows to call for our services and you're helping us get that out and there's different populations there are some people that will go to a meeting at a school on a saturday and have pie and there are some people that will watch a recording of this or come on zoom um, so we just really appreciate all the opportunities and we table all the time, go to community events and all that sort of thing. It's not as easy to say, come to us, you're always welcome, come, we'd love to be on the agenda. Um, and well, yeah, you would be. Well, I understood, that's what I'm saying. If you took every three years, if a third of us came every year and spoke at one of your meetings, um, I, I believe me, I've watched your recordings, I've been on, I know how long they are, and all that you have going on, I also think it's well worth it to give us 15 minutes, you know, every one a month to, to talk about what we're doing. Um, I think it serves you, us, and the taxpayers. Um, so um, I would encourage you to think about that. Um, let's see if there was anything else. Um, I, I have one other perspective, and it's actually about the individual votes, um, voting on the individual organizations or grouping them. And this is my perspective, I feel like, more as a taxpayer than a representative of Clarina. Um, we actually got one of the highest numbers of yes votes for our organization. I'm not worried about people approving us. We do good work. We've been here for 42 years. People know us. And I also don't like the fact that I think part of the time when these are all looked at separately, we're not all equal. Some of these organizations don't have paid staff. They don't have marketing budgets. They haven't been around for 42 years and they're all doing great work. We work with them every single day and we're all doing great work. So, and it's a huge blow sometimes. I mean, a really small organization that loses $10,000, $2,000, let's say, most of us are very small. That can be a huge blow to their non-staffed organization. So um, I think you're probably in best agreement about looking at them separately, but I at least wanted to offer that perspective that it feels much more, me as a taxpayer, it feels much more as a popularity contest than anything else, and it doesn't feel right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So what is our, what are we, are we we're going to wait till you come back for the document right. and then we'll We're going to talk about uh, application. The application, next. all right. So on the application, um, one that was in my packet was the same as the one I downloaded. Um, I had made a suggestion that um, on the last of the front page where it says describe your organization, the population you serve, and the services it provides, I just went on to say the services it provides to Morristown residents. And the reason I did that is because I felt like the first one on the second page it could eliminate that because it seems somewhat redundant. Yeah. So um, I would just make the suggestion that we add to Morristown residents to that bottom piece of the first page, take out the top of the second page, and then go to um, the third question. I think it covers everything that yeah. that application previously had. I would agree. Yeah. It's a bit it consolidates everything. Yeah, I agree. So, right. so we we'll make a motion on both of these and come back with those changes. Okay. Does that work? That makes sense. That's good. I really like that Becky gave her feedback now. Mm -hmm. I know it's out of line, but is there more community feedback before I go change? Thank you. Oh, don't have to that one. <laughs> I would just add that I, um, like Becky, our organization also receives uh, town allocations, um, and it is it it is a uh, not a great situation to have um, 
a line item budget that way for the, the, the competitive nature of it. Um, and as Becky said, we do all work together. So, um, you know, I, I think what she said very articulately is something that I feel um, and felt after that town vote. Um, and if there is a way to overcome that challenge, and I understand and have watched your, your meetings and was at the informational meeting, I understand what you are all up against. Um, if there was a way to thread that, that needle, I, I would really encourage um, the select board to try to find a way to do that because the, the itemization um, of those social service organizations is really, um, it works against us instead of uh, building a more comprehensive system that I think actually makes the town stronger and may actually um, be a more economically um, advantaged way to approach it. Um, so I would really just encourage you to consider not putting it as a line item. Um, and I also support what Becky said about attending the select board meetings. It's it's quite encouraging for our staff to hear how much town citizens um, support our work because that can be really um, some isolating work that we do. So to hear that um, folks from town really like the work we do, have heard about it um, and, and support it is also sort of, it's like a nice two-way street for you all to hear about us and for us to hear that you're supporting us as well. So I would gladly take an evening um, to come for as little or as much time as you uh, had. Thank you. I uh, I know that uh, I mentioned this before at other select board meetings, but when I worked the polls, people did not read the reports in the town report and uh, the report, which was unfortunate because all the information about the appropriations was in there. It, information people would need. So um, I appreciate Becky's uh, input and your input also into this process. So I'm, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. The um, you know the unfortunate piece of this is is that we don't have town meeting. Because from where I, my previous world in Waterbury, it was line item by line item. We had talked a number of times about lump summing them. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, here in Morristown and in Waterbury, it oftentimes the total accumulation of the asks were a penny or more on the tax rate. And it's money and this year, it's a penny because it would be about $111,000 based on last year's um, ask. Um, we expected organizations to be there to speak to the motion, and if there was nobody there to speak to the motion, we moved to pass over it. But the voters got an opportunity to do that. Unfortunately, um, what now is going to happen is, is that the service organizations are going to need to try to get the word out. Hopefully, the community uh, involvement, uh, if that comes to fruition, will be a part of that. But we're talking about real money and real tax dollars. And I think that allowing the, the, municipal, the residents, the voters, to take a look at the individual appropriations and making a decision rather than to lump sum them together and just say it's all or nothing, um, I, I, I don't agree with that. I think that from our fiduciary responsibility, we need to um, these are special ass outside our budget and they need to be approved by the voters in the doing. I would second that and uh, having been an advocate of this for years and years and years and been a not-for-profit for the past 40 years, um, I, I think, you know, needs change in a town um, and uh, again, this is the taxpayer's money. Um, and I think they have a right to pick, and, uh, and um, it, there's always some, there's possibly a casualty, um, but we rethink it. So I, I think it has to be line item. Um, I think the voters have got, it's their money, they've got to decide, and in a democratic process, we have to accept. All agencies have the option to come back. Um, and repetition. So we're not cutting them out forever. Um, and I think, you know, having gone through it once, agencies are now aware of the process. Um, and so I think, you know, we have to 
Initially, we have to be responsible. So we're all set. You're going to break yeah, this up. Well, I think we're good. Okay. All right. I'd like to approve warrants. A motion to approve the warrants. I would make a motion to approve the warrants. Do we have, Do we have any warrants? Oh, they're that? still over here. <laughs> we'll get them all to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you get a motion. Got a motion. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to leave them without them. Yeah. All right. Second. Second. Any discussion? Well, I think we need to look at them. <laughs> no. I, I can't. I'm not willing to vote until I see them. I'm sorry. Together. Yeah, I mean, it's there's more to it than. Can we come back to this? Sure. Department head report. Any department heads like to do a report? These won't be essential, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> Captain Barrow, if I were superintendent, um, just uh, moving forward with our moving stockpiles out of the gravel pit. Mr. Percy is all done. Everything is done up there. Um, we're just moving the piles to our shops to get those winter ready. We're moving forward with our trucks, um, servicing, getting them put back together, ready for the winter season ahead of us. That's about where we're at right now. Any questions for Kevin? Nope, I'm, I'm reading the Farmer's Almanac. Well, yeah, they're saying it's gonna start hard, so. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I'll tell you in April. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Anyone Kevin. else? Yes, sweet finance director. I just wanted to let you all know that today was the last day of our audit. She's been here for a little over two weeks and she gave me a draft audit when she left. No findings, uh, no problems at all. Our single audit went very smoothly. So I just thought you'd all like to know that. Perfect. Thank you. Good job. Good job, Tina. Oh, Tina, can, I, back can I say something? I want to say one yeah. thing. Hold come on. back up, Tina. Come back up, Tina. <laughs> I want to say one thing. I want the public to know, one thing I want Judy uh, Alberry, administrative assistant, one thing I want the public to know is that there is no job in this building that gets a report card every single year, except for the finance director when they do the audit. Nobody else in this building gets a report card. So, Tina gets one every year. So I think it's important for people to know. Yeah. Thank you. Up. It works out well for you that I'm an A student. I want you to share with the family. You told me that the auditor calls you when she is at other places. Yeah, sometimes we um, we have a very good relationship with our auditor and different towns do things differently. And so sometimes if there's a couple of different ways to do something, she will call me and ask me what we have done so that she can get another perspective on it and um, you know potentially recommend that to somebody else. Very nice, very nice, very nice. So I'd like to read a um, recreation department update from Anna. She asked me if I would read it. She wasn't able to be here tonight because she's put in some overtime and didn't want to stretch that out. Well, Oktoberfest had an incredible turnout. <clears throat> the weather was great and there was such a positive community spirit. Morristown Recreation set up a fun zone with games as well as giant bubbles on Portland Street. The giant bubbles were a hit and there was a tangible sense of play in the atmosphere and smiles lasted all day. Shout out to Trisha Follett for organizing such a great event for our community. I hope you all get a chance to check out Morrisville highlighted in this event on WCAX. This is Anna speaking. I attended the 80th Annual Vermont Parks and Recreation Conference in Fifth Killington this past week. There were many great presentations, including Kingdom Trails, Vermont Search and Rescue Coordination, Burlington Parks and Rec, Ridgeline Outdoor Collective, recreating of our, recreating or recreating of our aging community, as well as more. <coughs> This was a great event for networking opportunities as well as collecting creative ideas and having an open forum to ask questions. I will continue to pursue the resources I've gathered from this conference as I go forward in expanding the recreation offerings of our town. I've been reviewing the survey done by the Rec Committee in 2018. One of the main requests from community members has been for a compiled directory of recreation opportunities within our community, 
which has also been listed as part of our town plan. I've been working on creating an index of trails, fishing access, parks, playgrounds, and facilities to post on our website for easy community access. I have begun working with the state 911 coordinator to assign 911 addresses to each of the public trailheads and to access and access points used in town so that we are able to list an address associated with each location for accessibility as well as safety. I'm taking over the coordination of our annual Halloween candy drop and I'm working with the school and local clubs to organize and distribute candy to households within the village. More information will be posted on Front Porch Forum and our website later this week. We are beginning planning for our second annual Turkey Trot 5K Run Walk. Sophie Beck has been our high school rock star coordinator for this event. Last year, she was able to donate $1,100 to the Lamoille Community Food Share. This year, she's hoping to donate to Meals on Wheels. I feel so grateful to have a full-time position. I just want to thank everyone who has supported recreation making it a great asset to our community. Respectfully, Anna Green. Thank you very much. Um, come on up. <laughs> but when you do, we listen. Yes, sir. Dennis Sigurgorio, Fire Chief, Morrisville. Just let the board know and whoever else is listening that last weekend, the 23rd and 24th, I had seven of my members at Franklin Memorial Fire School. Two of us are on the committee, plus two of my people instructed. Just to let you know that even though it's not a Tuesday night, we have that many people training and you'll see the bill. Because <laughs> it, it costs to go to that school, but that's why I have a training budget. And also just want to give you guys a heads up the association invested in a low angle rope kit a little while ago. Well, they just did their second training with it Tuesday night down on the rail trail. So it's going to be a, a very good asset for us because we've been with EMS multiple times. Mountain biker decides he doesn't like the trail mm -hmm. and they go off in the willy wags. Well, the two of us get called and PD gets called. So now, and that saved the town out of the budget over $6,000. That's what that equipment cost. So just to let you know that our association does do a lot for the town, that I don't <coughs> tell enough about it, but just to let you guys know, that's just one of the, 20,000 that we've spent on different equipment in the past year for the town. So, thank you, Dan. Great. That's yeah. nice. So, um, before we'll signing these, warrants. yeah, let's just make a motion on the warrants. Okay. So, so, I made a motion to sign the warrants. All right. I'll second. And a motion to second for the warrants. Any um, uh, discussion? <coughs> Jonathan, you're not discussing our warrants, are you? No, I think he's for community concerns. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Town Administrator's report. Uh, just a couple things. Saturday was the annual Rocktoberfest. I met with Trisha today, and she said it was uh, one of the busiest ones they've had. So, big thanks to Trisha for organizing <laughs> this. She puts a lot of power into it. And Anna has helped her quite a bit, as well as the highway department. Uh, they came out and closed the streets down on Saturday. Uh, I saw there was some positive uh, media attention given to it, so that's great. And the only other thing is that the highway department's going to start picking up leaves on the village streets near storm drains in the next few weeks, but it's only leaves, no branches or other debris. And we'll be putting a media press release out for that in a couple, probably another week. I saw people are already starting to put their leaves out. Is that a problem? We're not going to pick them up for two more weeks. Two more weeks. Oh, okay. Any questions for Jason? Thank you. Uh, select board comments. I start with Richard. 
I just wanted to say that I thought Rocktoberfest was fantastic this year. We haven't been in a couple of years. The weather was great. There's a lot of seemed like there's a lot of interest. It was a really Trisha, good event. Thank you, Trisha. She did a great job getting that weather organized. Yes, super. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to say I'm um very happy about the manager committee and that we're making um <clears throat> some very positive inroads on things I've been pushing for. Um, and I have to say it was, um, I see a light at the end of the tunnel that we're making some significant um, improvements in management and going forward, um, which I think is going to make everybody's life much easier and um, continue, I guess. So I, 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 I'm feeling very positive about where the direction this town's going in. It's going to be a while, but we're getting there. Chris? Um, no, I was, uh, I sec second uh, uh, Richard's uh, and Jason's uh, uh, commending of everything that happened on Oktoberfest. Um, I don't think people really understand what a community effort it is, you know, between um, Trisha as the hub in which the spokes revolve around and, and all the other town departments and people involved in it. Um, it just certainly um, was a perfect day weather-wise and a perfect day uh, social-wise. And uh, we did get a lot of nice press uh, from uh, WCAX, too. Uh, it was a great interview and a great, great story on it. So uh, really kudos to this community. Thank you. I, too, was going to thank Tricia and Anna and the road crew and probably the police were involved in, in with uh, the Rocktoberfest. And I... What I really appreciate, besides the weather being gorgeous, which um, we don't have any control over, but uh, the the uh, vendors that were there this this year, it was a nice variety, and I really appreciate that, Tricia. I know it must be a hard um, process to do uh, to bring all those uh, vendors together, but I really appreciated the variety. Did you want to say something? I, I, I could say something. You know, it, it's very interesting. This is our 11th year of doing Rocktoberfest. And I had more vendors reach out to me than I reached out to them to be part of this event in Morristown. And at the end of the day, I wander around and I ask people what they thought. You know, just the hype of like people saying, I love Morristown. I love this community. I love to see how it's moving, how it's growing. I don't know. It's, you know, after we've had some bad press and good press, I just say I am very happy with how the end result of this worked out. And like I said, Anna Green doing the fun zone down the other end with all those little kids playing in bubbles and the bubbles were all over them. I mean, just watch some of the videos. If any of you are on Facebook, take a look. It, it was a good event. It was a good event for for us as a town, but it, more than anything, it was a good event for our community. Yes. Thank you all for supporting it. Thank you, Tricia. Yeah. Um, I want to mention to the select board that um, we have a memo about the joint meeting of the trustees, and they have kind of their brainstorming ideas. So if you have any ideas that you'd like to be addressed at the meeting, <coughs> send them to Judy. She can put them on the list. Okay. All right. Um, community comments. I have, I know Jonathan. Could you introduce yourself? We can't hear you. You're, you're muted, you're John. On, you're on mute. Nope. Still can't hear you. He's not muted. He's not? <laughs> we just heard Trisha, so she has worked. It's on his end. It's on his end. He probably doesn't have his volume up or something. Gotcha. We may have to come back to you. You might have to leave Jonathan, sign out, and sign back in. Need a little technical error or something. Anyone else from here? Oh. 
Sarah Haskins, community member. I just wanted to publicly thank the fire department and the uh, rescue service. I had a propane leak two weeks ago at my house that could have been bad and it was totally fine and they had to come out twice um, because of it. And um, it was just, I see them here at work, but I don't see them at my house on a personal level and I just can't thank them enough. Um, your assistant does. <laughs> <laughs> Martin? Yes, uh, Martin Green, Best Street, Morrisville. Just a question um, about as far as um, approving the warrants. And Judy, when, when you were reading that letter from Anna, uh, the select board was still uh, reviewing those warrants. And I was just wondering if in the future, perhaps if you're going to read a letter as you did from Anna, that um, perhaps you could wait until uh, those warrants are already approved and looked at that way that the, the entire select board can hear what you're reading. I just happened to notice Laura was involved with that. And I know it's hard to, to pay attention. And it was a beautiful letter from Anna. And I'd just like to be able to see everybody hear that and anything that you might be reading and sharing um, and maybe just give time for those warrants to be approved and then perhaps read whatever you're going to read. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. I, and I have, I have Anna's um, letter here so I can share it with the rest of the board. They can read it also. I heard Great. you. Thank you. Jonathan, want to give another shot? He texted me and said he's working on it. Yeah. So we're gonna, Jonathan, while we're waiting for you, we're gonna go to the um, back to the social service appropriation policy. So I have a question for you, Sarah. <laughs> um, it says in here that. Uh, Agencies have had an appropriation request approved at the most recent annual town meeting are not required to submit a petition for article requesting appropriation in year two or three of the appropriation cycle. Oh, yeah, sorry. That was oh. a good change. All right. I missed that one. Thank you. That was based on the. Okay. Shred it. Where is that? Let's see. <clears throat> Right there. Thank you. <clears throat> That's something we missed the first time through. No, it was supposed to come out. Oh, it was? Yeah. Oh, okay. Jonathan, do you think you can do it yet? I'll move to Carol. <laughs> Could you introduce yourself, Carol? Uh, I'm lo I'm logged in under Carol. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. That's what he does. How's everybody doing? Good. So, All right. So I wanted to. Say thank you uh, for uh, to Tricia if she's still here for the Rocktoberfest. First of all, because that was awesome, a great way to launch uh, an introduction to the town for folks who didn't know I was there with Solma yet. Um, Tricia definitely rocked it out. That's awesome, and can't thank you enough for what you did uh, and do for the town. And uh, but I do want to talk about the parking. I thought I was going to be on the agenda, which is, you know, and I, and I have been working with Jason and Todd and things have been great. But, you know, I was also told that under the the weather issue, um, there's very limited time to do anything with the lines and probably this week. So, you know, I'm happy to get back with Jason and everybody from the select board. But as I mentioned earlier, when you were discussing the trees, like we can't even get FedEx and UPS back there. So at a minimum on a temporary solution, I'd like to take the two parking spots that are to each side of the opening so that FedEx can back in without hitting another car uh, and at least 
block those out so they're not parking and then i can get with the select board jason and todd and we can come up with a more permanent solution um you know that we can address i guess during spring um uh, you know if, if that's acceptable i just i can't get any deliveries and i can't you know uh it's dangerous there's a lot of blind sides to these bigger trucks and fedex and ups aren't that big and they can't get in there so i'd, I'd really appreciate some help from you guys to work on a, a short-term solution till we can find a long-term solution I think Jason's working with you on, on, on a solution because it's we can't um, come we can't make a decision here at the board because it's not on the agenda. But I know that you and Jason are working on this, so I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just I just know that you can't paint under you know once it gets below a certain temperature. That was something that the Morristown you know road crew guys were you know discussing with Jason and Todd and myself. So if you guys are mean for another two weeks, that's getting us into even colder temperatures. So if you know that's something that Jason can help work with uh, and make happen, uh, you know, the weather's only going to allow for the line stripping, you know, like this week to make these adjustments. So just need a little flexibility here. You know, I mean, we we're just I was throwing a, a, a curveball here, you know, blindsided by the fact that, you know, the previous town manager who resigned made changes without discussing this. I mean, this was pretty much resolved with Dan um, and I didn't know anything about it. So really need a hand here. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so we're going back to the social service policy. Look that over. Yeah, this this looks fine. Do we need um, a motion to this? Yes. I, I would yeah. do two yeah. separate motions. I do one on the policy and, and one on the, the application. Second on the application. <clears throat> okay, I will make a motion to accept the social service appropriation policy, um, town of Moores. Town as presented. I would second that motion. Was that a motion and a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Approved. I will make a motion that we accept the social service agency appropriation application, um, town of Morristown as presented. I second that. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have the social channel. service <laughs> policy approved and ready to move on to other business. Um, if there's groups for one more uh, comment before we read community comments. Yes, go ahead. Alex here. Um, I live here in Morrisville. Um, and just thinking back to the discussion of the um, uh, noise house being a separate sort of like half cent or being part of the main budget, I think probably should either be in the main budget or the select board should sort of commit to re putting something on the ballot if it gets rejected. Um, just because the town owns it, um, I think it is regrettable that that funding went to zero this year. And so just to keep up with the town's responsibilities, I think there should just be consideration to make sure that even if there's some revision of how much the funding is for that year, it shouldn't go to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are you reading the? I don't think I have anything here. Um, should be part of your path. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's on the last page. I mean, okay. that All right, I will do it. Um, we're going to move into executive session, so we have a number of motions. Thanks, sir. I move to enter executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge of labor relations with employees to the body will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion. A second. Any discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to enter executive session to discuss labor relation agreements with employees under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1B of the Vermont Statutes to include Interim Town Administrator Jason Luno, Interim Human Resources Director Tina Sweet, and Highway Superintendent Kevin Barrows. I have a 
have a motion on second. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 We move to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. I have a motion and a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We move to go into executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee subject to T1BSA 313A3 to include interim town administrator Jason Luno. Interim uh, interim Human Resources Director Kim Sweet and Administrative Assistant Judy Alberry. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge of the pending contract negotiations will clearly place the town at a disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Sorry, I fell asleep. No. So, so, I second. second. I second. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. I move to go into executive session to discuss pending contract negotiations under provisions of Title I, Section 13A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include interim town administrator Jason Bruno and finance director Team Sweet. I have a motion. I have a second. I'll second. Got a second. Any discussion? Is All that right. pending contract? Okay. Pending contract negotiations. Hold on one second. Please add me to that motion. Uh, I would. I would uh, yeah. also include yeah. uh, Jason Luno, Finance Director Tina Sweet, Kevin Barrows, Highway Superintendent, and Julia Alberry, uh, Administrative Assistant. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Phew. Is that it? Yeah. We. Um, Bathroom time. The this meeting is adjourned, right? Uh, oh no, we're no, adjourned. No, we don't adjourn until after executive session.